Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Day seven, the first final week day of a seven day week. Oh, the fuck I'm saying. Ignore me. <clears throat> anyway, we'll be continuing and doing our thing. However, there's some things that came up between yesterday and today that we need to figure out as well. Um, so I think we make level 10. And see if we can get those sorted out. Um, yeah. I'll explain. So, yesterday after stream, I went about getting the, the store page on Steam ready and set up. I currently have it submitted to Steam, and they have to approve it and whatnot, which usually takes two to three days, if not longer. And it depends. And after that, it should be visible on Steam, I think. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the... Problem arose as I was trying to grab screenshots for the game, and, well, I didn't want to just take small little screenshots of the Unity developer window, right? I, I wanted to have full uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, screenshots. So I went ahead and built the game, and I launched the game, and it sat at a black screen and did nothing. So I had to fix that off... Uh, stream and I got that working so I can actually launch the game and I was able to get some screenshots from the first couple levels and whatnot but then an issue arose <clears throat> and that issue was various things so I'm going to show you what I did so first of all the the main issue that I was having with the game not launching or sitting at a black screen is when we had separated them out between a uh, the saved things value here, which saved the GM and all of these scripts and the GUI and all those things there, and then the, the main canvas. And if we open up the uh, main menu script, you can see we load all this stuff in here. So what was happening was I was getting music playing, but nothing else was happening. So it was going through this stuff right here, this music, but it wasn't getting like the event tracker or the GM or the save manager. So it was getting stuck here, apparently. That's, that's my guess. I don't know for sure. I can't, I can't know for sure because uh, it was just a black screen and there was no debug information to work off of and I couldn't really tell, but I was hearing music. And actually, it wasn't the music that we put in here. It was the uh, very, like, the source music. So if we uh, open up GM here, it was the World 1 music, not the main menu music that we were supposed to be hearing. And so I knew that there was an issue with none of this stuff hitting. Right? So I tried adjusting this value from, like, 1 or 0 0.1 to, like, 1, 0 0.5, so like that, and I still wasn't getting anywhere. So... The issue that I fixed was I, ju I just copied the GM and the GUI from saved things down to the main manager, uh, main menu manager. So that way they start at the same time, if, if not a little bit earlier than the main menu. So now if we hit play, we still have the same basic thing happening where the GM and the GUI are in this don't destroy on load setting so that they never go away. But now we have access to them at the main menu. So it's nice. And uh, I think I actually did that with I'm Just a Slime, my, my previous game. I just forgot about it. So I kind of did that. Uh, the other thing that was happening was the new game button wasn't working, but that was also part of it not connecting to the uh, GM. Because if it can't hit the GM, then it can't do the other stuff, right? It won't be able to set anything. Although, the, the cursor was going invisible, like the cursor got... Uh, here, we move this over here. The cursor got visible, was being set to false. It was just erroring out at the next line because GM wasn't selected. So, and there was a moment where I was able to get the main menu to show up in the game, but GM itself still wasn't loaded. That was before I moved them 
going over to uh, the main menu thing here. So that's some of the stuff I fixed uh, off screen just to get some screenshots. But as I was playing the game, other issues arose, namely these things. First of all, in the game, when you actually play it, outside of the Unity editor, the buttons don't work in the pause menu at all. They appear to like click if you like tap them and like you, you click on them. I think, wait, was that the case? I actually I don't think they even click. Like you can't even like click them. They just, nothing happens. Um, there's not even like a highlight like that indicates that a click was made. Uh, the second thing was when moving to the next level, after you beat a level, the blocks collide with each other. This causes the next level's blocks to move. And what I mean by that is if we move this aside and open up our, our levels here. So it was first noticeable in this level. What had happened was I saw this block was like up here a little bit further. And this one I think was also up above. And if we look back and compare where the blocks are here to level one, three, uh, we can kind of see some of the blocks here, like the immovable blocks and the other ones that we had probably moved out of the way. Um, so what was happening was that these hitboxes and like the, uh, the level bounding box, since these were overlapping each other, um, everything in this level was being affected by all the hitboxes in the previous level until that level got destroyed. So for like fractions of a second, everything was getting moved around and it was not great. So it would cause some things to be misaligned and whatnot. I think we can actually show it here because I think it will actually happen. So if we go into new game, hit new game, we'll just go through the first couple of levels until we hit that. So it should be pretty simple. I can actually show the problem. We'll just move this out of our way. Go to the next level. Okay. I think the block we pushed landed on top of this immovable block before. But since the immovable block can't move, it doesn't matter. Okay. So here, I think. Yeah, so you see, if we uh, pause the game, um, so I can get my mouse back. You see this block right here? I don't, wait, no, that was supposed to be there. I thought it was supposed to be up higher. Maybe it's not this level that I have issues with. Maybe it's the next one. Or maybe it's just not gonna happen in the editor and I'm gonna look like a crazy person. Who knows? Go ahead and move this stuff around. <clears throat> okay. And then here, I believe we wanted to push these up. Okay. So do you see how up here, this blocks is kind of misaligned? I think that's because it got nudged a little bit, right? And uh, that's not great. But I think the most obvious one is gonna be the pitfall level. We can go up there. take a second to push all these blocks but so the pitfall level it was running into an issue where <clears throat> we were getting the uh, pitfalls sealed off before even moving any blocks because the blocks were getting moved and they were then going into the uh, the room so Okay, apparently the Unity editor is just perfect being, and it, it's not gonna do it. But I fucking swear to you, when I had test played it in the actual game, this hole got sealed off because this block had been moved into it. Um, I think another, I think this block somehow, because when the player was here, it probably shoved this block 
down to there and seal off that one when I first played that level. And uh, yeah, that was weird. So apparently the Unity editor just works fine and it's like, nope, no issue here, smile. This is why it's important to play test the game after you build it in an actual like game form and not just play in the Unity editor because you'll find a bunch of errors. Anyway, other than that, um, in level select, the high scores are all the same as the first score. And what I mean by that is uh, if we open up the high scores, or I guess just a thing, it actually might show us. Yeah, so you see how this happened? I have not played the level 11 times or 10 times, but for some reason, all of them have the highest score and not the uh, 999s like they should. So that was an issue. Also, the uh, buttons don't work, which actually works here. Okay. We're getting an argument out of range error right there. Also, if I click on the button near the bottom, the button below it gets clicked instead. Don't know why. Weird. Anyway, those are the issues I ran into there. And then in the second conveyor belt level, the pressure plate shows up in front of the belt. So like this. Don't know why. Because the conveyor belts are actually the conveyor belts all, are all. Oh, that makes sense. No, never mind. We can actually just fix that real quick. So uh, convey or belt. Let's go ahead and just select all of them. Let's go ahead and set the uh, order and layer to one. And that'll fix that issue. So go ahead and just cross that one off. That was very easy. I thought the conveyor belt or the pressure plate or one of them was uh, a different thing. But what is this exactly? Oh. This is also a very obvious reason why they're not working, because when you hit the button, it's trying to look through the, uh, the world images, which it has none of. It only has one. So because it was trying to search through those, um, it was getting an error. Where are those saved, by the way? In the main menu script? Yeah, here. So because there was only one in here, it was giving us issues. Anyway, um, I did make some more stuff. Like I said, I was going to. So we have all the colors available for our next levels, or our next worlds, I should say. I just kind of grabbed any old color and added them here. There we go. Apply. So this is like world two, this is world three, world four, and world five. So we start out with a, an orange one next, then a green one, then a purple one, and then a red one. I did make also um, a couple of other colors. If we bring this over here, I made a, a brown, a yellow, and a like, teal or aqua color. Um, just in case we want to add more, just so I didn't have to do it later on, but we're not going to import them quite yet because if we decide not to go that route, that would be extra. Like, yeah, look at that. That's 288 kilobytes um, that we'd have to have in our game that would not be used. So I'm not going to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and cut these up so that they can be used. And then cut this one up. And cut this one up. And cut this one up. And also, it's really quiet, isn't it? I'm going to play some music. Just give me a moment here. Boop. Boop. There we go. OK, that's better. Also, in addition to that, in the, the GUI, I'm going to grab my other thing here. We're also going to create a folder called uh, Level Screenshots. <clears throat> I'm going to this. That, that. So I made a title logo thingy for the uh, game. Here it is. As you can see, um, what is the resolution of this again? It is 
Seven six eight by five twenty. So seven six eight by five twelve. That's what it was. And I think if I pull shift, does it? Yeah, it scales properly, so I can just do this. However, I think that might cause issues with the new game and the continue buttons, since this element is overlapping with it. Full transparent mesh. Raycast target. Get rid of that. What does maskable mean? Yeah. Let me just check. If I hit play, can I still hit the new game button? I can. Okay. But will it work when it's actually playable? Who knows? That'll be one thing. So I have our, our little logo here. Some experiments. I AI generated this by, uh, well, it was very simple. I took um, some text. I just like typed out, I think this is time. No, this is not time. It's Roman font. It, it's some font. I forget which. Um, in paint, I just made some white letters on a black background and then took that into my uh, AI generating image program. And then I used a, I think it was like a depth marker or something field, what it's called, um, which basically adds prompts to like a black and white field. And most things will be concentrated on like the white section. And because I did that, it like made the uh, text colored, yes, uh, so it gives like graphics, I don't know. Yeah. So it's not just like I, I generated the slime experiments, uh, texts and everything itself, but you know, as you can see, it's not that great. If we're getting close, you can see kind of like artifacting around it because it, uh, it generated with a background and I had to like cut the background out of it and whatnot. Uh, for now, it, it works. We'll see how it actually looks when it's uh, out further, but for now that'll do us. All right, so with that stuff settled, um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and open up the testing space, hide the main menu, and actually what we could do before I do that, if I open up The screenshots. I think I'll open this up here. So I could grab like screenshots like this, but I don't really want the slime in them. So I think what I'll do when we're actually getting thumbnails for the level selector, I will take a screenshot after we've built the game and I'll just like cut out the slime and the numbers. Uh, so it's just like the level without anything happening to it. And we can go from there. Also, if I go through these. So you see right here how this box was moved up before I had even gotten near that area. And this box was also kind of misaligned from the center area. And this one was also kind of misaligned. Well, that's because, like I said, when things come in here, they had bumped other things. So if you look at the previous level, level three, if I move this one up, it would have been like right around here. The wall would have been here as well, which would have moved that block and whatnot, and uh, not good. Good, not good, not good. Uh, oh, as you can see here in this level, that, that block, right here it was already sealed off because something got pushed into it and whatnot not great that's about it for that okay now <gasps> okay level 10 let's finish this then we can work on fixing some of the other issues that came up and then we can maybe start on the rest of the levels so, here yeah, it goes. Okay. First, we're gonna need to zoom into it. Here we are. 
What is this? The tile map collider? What, 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 what is this? Bang. Why is that like... There? I just noticed that. It's weird that there's like two boxes outside of there, but I can like just... Huh. Huh. Whatever. All right. So, let's look at our previous level. There's a conveyor belt with some pitfalls in it and whatnot. What do we want to do with this one? Hmm, 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 hmm. Curious, curious. So, we look at our prefabs that we have available. We've used the pitfall, the movable block, we've used a conveyor belt. Oh, incidentally, I want to edit this real quick because it, uh, the thumbnail's messed up. Let's do that. And that. And we'll move this here. This one will move over to here, just so everything's kind of in the basic area when we go to use them. Now, instead of the thumbnail being like really far apart and zoomed out, it's showing these two blocks like that. Perfect. All right. So, hmm. I think yesterday I had said it'd be kind of cool if we had like the player and the exit next to each other. So if we were to put, for example, the spawn point like here-ish, and if we go to the tile map so we can grab a exit and we put the exit here, and then where's the spawn point again? Right there. So if we were to put like a wall going like here, a little corner, something like that. I'm just gonna go a little crazy with making this real quick lag. Let's do another one of these and then we can go upwards and do one of those. So the player will start here basically. Right? That'll be sort of the uh, the idea. The so player starts here, exits over here. Let's actually move the end of level. That it is ready to go into. Perfect. Okay. I do want to make a side note. Other than those errors that we pointed out before, the game played just fine. So, good stuff. Cool. All right. So, how do we want to start laying this out? First of all, we want to set the default parent to the items so we can do that. And just make sure that auto talkings dialog has not been messed up there yet. Okay. Cool. Ah, this is always the question, right? What do we want to start with? Hmm. So, I mean, I guess we're gonna just want a pitfall here. So that way, it at least seals off the the exit, right? Um, let's also, first of all, let's do that. And let's grab a, another pitfall and we'll put another one right here. It kind of seals off the room, right? So you're going to have to get a block from somewhere in this area into there, and then a block from here into there, and we'll figure out exactly what we're doing in just a moment. So. Hmm. Okay, so maybe what we can do is like grab a conveyor belt from here 
Now let's go to, was it 90 for up? Yep. Let's do up. And let's set this to be three, but the player cannot run past them. We'll do that there, that there. And we'll put an immovable block there and a pitfall here and a movable block there. I don't know why I copied the pitfall from that area and not just like this. There. Get a couple more immovable blocks here and here so we can't just push a block to the side. So what you'll have to do is you'll use a block to put one here to seal that hole up, then another block to put it down here where you'll slide a, another uh, block into there to get into that room. Right. Now, how do we want to do the rest of the level? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do this little room first. It should be pretty easy for us to figure out what we're going to do. Let's put a block down here. Okay. And we'll get rid of the obvious, like, areas you would push. Once again, I am using those rather than copying, which saves me the trouble of making a spawn point. Okay. So we'll seal those avenues off so you can't just push it up and then push it over and push it over and push it up. Push it over, right? You're going to have to finagle it through here, right? But... Let's make it a little harder, grabbing a conveyor belt, put it right here, and then let's switch it back to zero and have it be right. And then does that all, if you, if you hit that one at all, it's gonna send you flying into the hole there. I could just copy it again and paste another one down here. This one should be 180 for that. That way you have to kind of push it up here, over to here. You kind of got to push it up and then over. There's one thing that I learned with the blocks. I'm not going to do much here. As I was playing the levels. No. Already? Okay, no, these are different things. Oh, right, I need to have this thing open to test, or else it's going to not have GM. I was like, no way, no way the uh, the awake error is already showing up. Anyway, like I was going to show you, I learned you can kind of move the blocks diagonally by going like that. You can kind of like move them at an angle. It just takes a little bit because you have to like constantly move back and forth, right? Although I could potentially solve that. If I grab a movable block and in the rigid body, I think angular drag is what would fix that, wouldn't it? No? Does it a thousand maybe? That still lets you. So what an angular drag? That was 0 0.05 before. I don't know. I have no idea what angular drag is. I thought since linear drag is like when you're pushing it, it affects that drag. I thought that angular would be like doing it from the sides, but apparently not. Anyway, we can get rid of this block here. Let's see. Well, that just seems too simple to do that, don't it?
Let's just put another pit hole right there to mess with the play. <laughs> Dude, I can't beat the level. Ah, uh, no. Um. Good morning, Rao. How you doing? I could introduce the pressure play here. And then kind of have the player hit the pressure plate to spawn in a block. Which they could then, you know, just use blocks to seal up all those holes. I might as well. All right, where's this movable block? Here it is. Let's actually get rid of that. And let's add our pressure plate down here. Oh, the game's coming along just fine. Encountered some errors yesterday that we're going to have to fix later on. Either today or another day, who's... Who knows, but uh, yeah, some things that would actually break the game. So I think object to manipulate, and then is one object. Okay. So with that, oh, I'll we'll seem to make a spawn point for it. Create empty. Uh... Pressure plate spawn. Do that, and then we want this to spawn here. So move that down there. So now when you press the pressure plate, it'll spawn a block for you. That way you can you know, just seal holes. Yes. Go ahead and grab a, another block, another pitfall there then. And we'll just uh, call that good for that little room. We'll introduce the pressure plate and the respawning block mechanic. So, that'll be fun. I will have to be careful when I do use this respawning block mechanic, because if I use it in rooms with pitfalls, where the pitfalls are the puzzles, the player could just keep pushing the button to get a bunch of pitfalls, and uh, or get a bunch of blocks to seal pitfalls, which would then render the puzzle moot. But I guess that could be a solution, just brute force the hell out of it, right? Who can say? Anyway, now for the bigger area here. What do we want to do? <laughs> True, I could set it to only be used X amount of times, but... I also wanted to use it as like a, a respawner for like if you mess up the puzzle you can tap this to like get a block back which could be used for like destroyer blocks and stuff I think or like if you uh push a block past a gate seal the gate with the thing I, I guess it doesn't matter but yeah I could set it to be used with a certain amount of times That'd be extra logic and coding I have to do, though. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, I could use some conveyor belts here and do something. Let's make a block here and then we can go a conveyor belt here with a right force of three we can get some removable blocks here and here that way the player can push that block through here and have this block i guess um but why it doesn't really matter because I want them to have this block here, but it not do anything. So they're just like, why is this block here? Am I supposed to do something with this block? Kind of like a red herring. But in reality, you don't need that block or something, I don't know. I think I want to Kind of board off this direction over to here 
And then we can add another corner conveyor belt here. Need to go negative 90? No, it's 90 for up. Okay. We can go there and there. And then we just want to grab another one that is in the left direction. And 180. So it goes over that way. And this one we want to set three. So the player can't go back. They're just kind of screwed. They go in there, which means we want another mobile block right here. Okay. So the idea is. Hmm. So I actually, I wanted the player to push a block here and then a block here, and then have to go around this side. But it was like this, they could just push a block here, and then they could just follow it and go that way. Unless I make a gate. Oh, not a gate. I mean, uh... So I think we learned previously that the player can push a block, right? Like past a thing, but then the player can't move. Is that right? Didn't I use that in the previous level somewhere? No, I did this, this where you can push a block, like, here, and then it can't go any further because the player can't move over this while pushing the block. So it can't get any further, right? Dang. I need to come up with a... Maybe I make a new block that also destroys movable blocks and doesn't just pitfall them. Like a void block, sort of. You know? Kind of like the destroyer block. I mean, I could just use the destroyer block to destroy the block. Right? That would be introducing another thing in addition to the pressure plate. Which I could do. Screw it, let's introduce the destroyer block here. So, we're gonna have a destroyer block right there. And what we'll do is we'll have it so that the player comes down here, pushes that block, which then destroys the destroyer block. And then we can have more destroyer blocks up here and up here. Don't they destroy pit holes? Pitfalls, I mean? They do. So yeah, having that there would not work. Never mind. So yeah, what I want is something similar to a pitfall. However, I want like a void block that destroys blocks, but not the player. That's what I want. You know what? Let's break open paint.net. And we'll just make that happen real quick. First of all, I'll get rid of that. Um, 32 by 32. That'll be fine. Go ahead and get rid of all that. What shapes do I got here to choose from? Hmm. Let's make it kind of like a, a dark purple. And what happens if I just like... Hmm. Nah. Doesn't look good.
I could try this. First of all, let's turn off the uh, blurry mode of it. Uh, and we want it to be like that, and then we want to have it be like that. Perfect. And then, what if we put another one in the middle, but have this color be a little bit lighter, and have the outside be like that-ish? Um, does that look good? Not really. Centered on the top and bottom. Is it centered around here? I think it's not. There's like a few pixels that are just like, nah. I think that looks centered, so if I move it. do that right now and then let's grab our purple we can kind of fill out this stuff here a little bit and make it more symmetrical well that one needs to be black let's do boop and boop and i think that's all of that okay that and then let's grab this color so I can do that and then that and that and that. That looks more symmetrical to me. Although the the actual outside one is not symmetrical either now that I'm looking at it because we have like this little thing here and this little thing here. Is that better? I think so. No. A couple more missing here, there. And that can do it. Okay. And so let's go ahead and uh, res or change the canvas size. Let's go with like 196 over in that direction. We want to make this kind of animated. Go ahead and grab that. And then we will copy this bad boy. Paste it. Oop. And let's rotate it. It looks like any way that I rotate it, it's going to be blurry unless it's like that. There's one, two, three directions I can have it be in. Okay, that's fine. Let's try this again now. Okay, so one, I think that's lined up like that. Two. Here is three. And I think if we do it again, it's going to be pointing downward, right? Yeah, let's get rid of that. And we want to change the canvas size back to... Uh, 
Was it 96? Nope. No more than 96. Would be uh 128. <clears throat> Not that direction. 128. There we go. Okay. Let's save this as block void. I'm not sure what a sprite is. Like a program or whatever. Also, I'm not too worried about pixelization, to be honest. I just wanted to make it symmetrical for the hell of it. Okay. Let's import this bad boy. And get our void block set up. about 32. Yep. And let's make it. Think links are allowed? I'm not sure. Alright, block void. I think I've used that before. Potentially. But. I don't know. I don't know if that'd be more helpful since I don't know how. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an artist. So once it has like pre made shapes like paint.net has, uh, it would not be helpful for me. So. I think that looks good right there. So let's pause that. That we want to make it always animate, on scale time, and then we need to add a new script for our objects. Create script of the block void. Open that bad boy up. Oh no, you're fine, you can ask questions. I do not mind it at all. Give me something to think about. Alright. Oh, well, first of all, we want it to be above the background in the sorting layer. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> We want to do an on, we're gonna have to do trigger, on trigger enter 2D. And we wanna do a string object equals collision dot game object dot tag. We want to do a switch. A switch case. How dare you? All right, we need to do switch object. Ace. Boop, 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 break. There we go. Okay. So, what objects would it be? Movable. Block. Probably the inverse block. And then the destroyer block. I think those are the only blocks that we have that be moving around, right? Incidentally, let's go ahead and add a uh, circle collider 2D to this bad boy. That's what it is trigger. We want it to be sort of like right in the, the center area here. 
So we have a little bit of leeway to move things around. So that's perfect. No, the freaking graphs edge wake up error. Oh my god, it's gonna be so annoying. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Okay. So with that, we have our little thing there. Um, I don't think we need a tag for the black void. So, fine. Oops, not not the Windows Media Player. The God, that was a flashbang for you guys. Sorry. Okay, if it is a movable block, we want to do uh, destroy collision dot game object. I think for all of these, we just want to destroy the block. I think that's all we need to do. So it should let those slimes, like the red slime and the player slime, pass by safely. Anything else will get destroyed. Okay. I don't think I have to do anything else. So let's go ahead and take this black void. We'll put it right here. Oh. All right, let's hit play and see if it works. That should be a very simple thing. So go there and it gets destroyed. Okay. Perfect. The player can walk over it. It's just going to destroy blocks. Nice. Which means we can copy this, put it here. And have it destroy blocks as well. Hmm. Nice. Okay. So the first one's to kind of teach the player what it is. Um, the player can either walk past it, or they can push the block into it, and it will destroy the thing. Of course, the player might be a little stumped, being like, uh, I pushed the block and it got destroyed, so does that mean I'll get destroyed? They'll have to kind of figure it out themselves there. All right. Uh, first of all, we want to make a prefab of this real quick-like, or I forget. Okay. There we go. So now we have a... A, a hole that needs to be covered with a block, and then a block that can just destroy blocks. So this would be very handy to have here. All right. Okay. We don't have to worry about adding it into anything special, like our level reset script or anything, because the black void, just like the immovable block, is never going to move it cannot be destroyed or interacted with. It's just a thing that destroys other things. So it's perfect. Nice. All right. We come through here. You learn that the black void destroys. And then we need to get at least two more blocks here. Because one of them goes there, one of them goes there, and then the pressure plate can be used for the rest of this. So, the question is how to make these work. Hmm. Or how do I want to do this? Not necessarily. What is this? The animator black void is not valid? What do you mean it's not valid? It literally works. Oh, it's because the null reference. I think. I don't know. Get out of here. All right. Hmm. I swear, most of the time that we've been spending in the last couple of days has just been me staring at the screen, being like, what do I want to do now with the level? I should really take some time between streams or something to like. Maybe like research puzzle design. And they like and write some levels. Like uh maybe maybe like use paint or something. And be like, this is how I want the devil to look, you know? And then I can just make a bunch of levels on stream. 
uh, like that. I don't know. We'll see. Not today, anyway. <laughs> okay. So. What if I grab these blocks and put them here, for example? And then I just make kind of like a, a maze of immobile blocks that you're not able to get past. No, so this pressure plate only spawns a single block here. That's all that it does. It, uh, it spawns one block in one location every time you hit it. So it won't respawn all of them, it'll just do that one. Which I can show you here real quick. So let's just grab my little slime and we'll just cheat our way through the level. Hit the button and we got an error. There's no box letter 2D attached to the pressure plate spawn game object, but a script is trying to access it. There's already a block there. I'll move the other block out of the way. What am I doing? What is this? Right. You know what I should do? You know what I should really do? So the pressure plate, I'm just going to create an empty called PP block spawn. And we're going to add a component called a box collider 2D. And I think it's just a trigger. I really forgot that I used it like that. Okay, so we'll save that now. Go back, have a look at my pressure plate. It should have a thing attached to it so I don't have to keep moving stuff around. And I can get rid of this pressure plate spawn. Also, I should go into here and drag the thing there so it's already set up. I don't have to do that every time. There. Let's try this again. See what happens. And I'm not sure if that will work yet. I'll also to stop. Okay, so boom. Block got spawned. Okay, so it'll uh, spawn a block if there is a... If there's no block in that area. So we move these aside and spot a new one in, basically. Um, although, why is it spawning in the bottom left corner of it? That's weird. What if I make like a very very, very, very small, like, little thing like that. And then I hit it again. Why does it spawn there? Hold on. So... You want to check to see if the block that will be spawned was touching any of the old blocks. Wait. That, that, the comment is just wrong. First of all, check to see if the block will be spawned with a 
previous block already at that location. Yeah, I don't see why it's spawning it like in the bottom left corner. So let me let me. We're taking the object to spawn transform dot location. Did I do dot position? No, that just doesn't work. blocks in the area. Bottom block. So location to spawn the pressure plate set up to this which is negative 1x positive y so it should on that. Am I like? Never mind. Hold on. Let's see what happens. Once again, grab our character. Ooh. So we click the button, I have to go over to the scene view, movable block spawns at... What the fudge? Why is it 8.8 .8 scale? What? Are all the blocks that scale? Yes, they are. That's why. That's why. Let me check all of these real quick. I forgot about that. This is very important. Because the... Uh, so because these values were in here already... These are the default x, y values. So that's so why we have to change these to zero, zero. So they spawn there. So if we do ever decide to move them, they don't have any issues. So this guy needs to be zero, zero as well. This guy needs to be zero, zero as well. Maybe that's why the slime was not spawning directly on the uh, x. Portal zero zero projectiles zero zero. I think that's everything. The cage doesn't really matter since I put the slime in the cage now. Just run over everything, make sure everything is zero zero now. It is perfect. Okay. Yeah, the reason that was happening was a very good reason. Perfect. Now I actually spawn like kind of centered in the middle rather than like off to the left for some weird reason. Okay, we'll try this one more time. We're gonna hit the button. And it spawns right in the middle now. Excellent. So yeah. But if you do try to hit the button again, when there is a block on top of it, it won't do anything because it's checking with this code here. It, uh, it checks to see if there is a... Uh, it checks the box collider 2D as a spawn location to see if there is a, another block touching it. And if that's true, it says is touching equals true, which means it's not going to spawn a block. So that's how that works. But if you push it off, then hit it again, it'll spawn one. 
And you can do that. You can do this. Damn it. No. Oh, did I have to make those conveyor belts like three? I think I might have screwed myself here then. Oh, I think I'm making a little bit of progress. Maybe? Am I? I don't think I am. No! Damn you! Damn you, conveyor belt! Whatever, I just bought another one. Whatever. Anyway, let's uh. I know it's gonna be belts real quick. Let's set them to be power of two. Otherwise, I feel like it's a little bit harder to have. Okay. So yeah, that's what, that's what the pressure plate does. See, you asked a question, and then it led to me figuring out a bunch of different stuff that was potentially going to cause problems in the future. Good job, Ryle. Okay. So now, first of all, get that out of here. I wish I could be like, hey, if you see this error, just ignore it. Rather than it showing up every single time I hit play or I'm pause and whatever. Look at look at this motherfucker. I can like hide the errors, but then I can't see any error. To this where I started screen for another like five minutes to decide how I want to lay this out. <clears throat> okay, well perhaps I take one of these blocks, rather than it being down there, I have it be like down here. Where you have to kind of push it through here. And then let's grab like an immovable block here. So you basically push this one forward up to here. And you can go around, push it up, up, over, and up to get into there, I guess. That's what we'll do for that one. This one, let's start down in the corner. And initially, you could just push it directly up and then over, but that's too easy. So you can push it up to there, and then... We could do something like that. If they do decide to push it up in the, in the corner, it would, uh, I don't know why they would do that seeing the thing there, but they could still choose to do it. I guess we can just add stuff to overwhelm the player's senses and be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. There's so many things to choose from, right? Okay. Oh, I should push it up to here, push it up to here. You gotta push it up for one more, and go over here, push it over again, then you can push it up there. That's fair, I think. Yeah. Was that a, uh... Another one there. I'm just pushing it over to here and then up to there. Okay. I think for now this one will work for our, uh, our little layout. So this will prevent them from pushing blocks down into there. And then they'll have to get these two blocks over to here and then there so they can go all the way around, push the block into there, and we'll have to just actually show you. <coughs> so. The player can either move this block or not move it. If they do move it, they'll figure out that, oh, the blocks get destroyed from that. Can't go back afterwards, so... Fine. 
the law have to push this block. They can then go around here to do. Or they could be like, I'm going to push this block into the purple void thing again and move it all the way over there. But if they're smart, they'll do that. Incidentally, I think those conveyor belts are moving uh, too fast to walk past again. I can test that out here in a second. Then they'll do this. Push the block over here, nice and easy to line it up. Push it down here. And I'm gonna try and follow it, because I'll just die. Then we get pushed here and we can't go back. We have to go forward. Yeah, we can't go past the conveyor belts, so it basically forces the player to go in the pitfall if they mess that up. Push that over to here, hit that. We can then just kind of fill all the holes that they want to. Which honestly, the easiest thing to probably do would be to just fill that left hole, run over here, push this one up, go over there. Just like you don't have to deal with finagling it through these things. Then you can go through and exit the level. Okay. Well, that'll be level 10, I suppose. So now we just got to add things in where they belong. So um, we need to add all of our pitfalls. So let's just hit pitfall. Let's lock that. Boop, boop. Pitfalls. We don't have any portals. We don't have any gates. We do have a pressure plate. Pressure plate. There we go. And then we have... Three movable blocks. We need to copy in from here. Then we need to add three respawn points for them. Block spawn, two, three. And then just grab these, move them over to here. And that should be everything for that. And then we just need to move these to the proper locations. There we go. All right, another easy level. Um, good stuff. And then we can just hit save. We need to add some talking and dialogue, but we'll, again, do that after we make a prefab for it. Boop. And then delete that. Go into level nine, go to end level, copy over the game level, object, save. All right, so if we look here, my experiment could have just been luck after all, LOL. Okay, so level nine was the conveyor belt level. And let's zoom back in. So, we'll say, let's see how you fare with this level. Look, I think we'll just do that. Just a couple of lines of dialogue there. I won't be explaining any of the new elements, so good luck. That's all it really needs to say. Cool. So, that's level 10 completed. Excellent. And, hmm. Now. Now, 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 now. Let's solve some issues, shall we? So, as I had previously mentioned, we were having issues with this stuff, or I found we were having issues with this stuff. And before we fix some other things and go forward with the next, like, 10 levels or whatever, I want to make sure that I get these fixed. So, 
The buttons of the pause menu not working when built. I'm not sure what the issue with that would be. Um, because they just live here on this canvas. And there's nothing that would be blocking them from working. The further. There's a text box down there. Timer in the upper left. This loading panel, which is below it anyway, so. I mean, maybe the loading panel, but if it's not active, then let's uncheck the raycast target. I don't think that would matter. I just, I just don't know. So we'll, we'll test that. Well, actually, we need to do that down to this one, actually. Okay. So we'll remove raycast target. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and hide that scene. Hide that scene. Okay. So we don't know if that's fixed. Figure it out. Uh, when moving to the next level, blocks collide with each other, causing the next level's blocks to move. That one is going to be a bit of a pain. Because previously, the loading of the next level was handled in the finished level script. Yeah? Where we do end level, and then we transition to the level by spawning it before this current level is destroyed. But that's not gonna work now. So what we need to do is probably utilize the game manager and we need to do a public void Spawn new level. And it's going to take a game object called level. It doesn't need to since it has all the levels here anyway, but we're just going to pass one in anyway. Um, and so what the level script will do is rather than... The finished level script, sorry. So it's going to get the old level and it's going to get the um, new level, right? And we don't actually want to do that. So let's copy this over to the game manager and we'll deal with errors in a second. But we want to do a new thing up here called game world manager GWM. GWM equals game object. Oops. Game object dot find game object with tag GWM dot get component game world manager. So first and foremost, we're gonna have to actually um, create a, a game world manager tag. So we do that. So game world manager. We have to add that tag here. Or no, I just call it GWM. Crap. Um, remove that tag. Really? I can't remove it because it's being used. Really? How annoying. Select it, please. Thank you. Okay, remove that. Add GWM. It will remove from the list the next time the project is loaded. Okay. So we got the GWM. We're going to add here. Excellent. I can hit save. So now we have a way to go into the game world manager like that. So we will do GWM uh, dot. What did I name this again? Spawn new level. Right. GWM dot spawn new level. And then we want to do next 
level there. So we'll send that over into that. This has been copied, so we don't need this anymore. Um, and then we want to start the coroutine for that. Actually, no, we just want to grab this. We do that. But yeah, this this way it doesn't work. So we want to save the game. And then only when the game finished saving do we want to do the rest of this. So I should actually probably move the GM is loading to here. Let me check the save data as well. So I'm gonna save the ET. We don't do anything with is loading here, right? Okay. Back out of that. So is loading GM equals false. Where do we do GM equals true? So when we collide with it, we do that. Okay. Right. We can actually just remove GM is loading. It's false. That's fine. Okay. So we're going to send our data over to the game world manager. Okay. And we're going to just remove this. And this is going to be level. And this should just be... Vector three zero 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 new vector three zero zero zero. That way it always spawn at zero zero zero, which we want it to do. And then we want to set the event tracker to be that. And we want to do gm dot is loading equals false as the last thing here. However, we actually needed a, a Kodo team here. And we want to do level spawn. So I E numerator. I'm going to call it level spawn. Copy this stuff down to there. Okay. Then we need to do this. We're gonna wait for like 0 0.2 seconds. Okay. So the reason for this, um, I guess game, uh, we'll just do level then game object level. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. All right. So the way this works, let me explain. We have the finish level script, which is going to trigger when we when we hit the exit level. All right. So it's going to throw up this GM that is loading. It's going to check the high scores, return the times, and hit the end level script. In the end level script, we're going to wait for one second so we can check the high scores and all that. We're then going to um, grab the current level Why am I doing this? Am I using current level anywhere? No. So I could just do I remove that. Remove that. Remove that. Just do current level there. 
I was saving some code lines. Um, hmm. Let's change this to 0.5f. And we're not waiting too long to do this. It shouldn't take us too long to check the high scores and stuff. And then we're also waiting till it's saved as well anyway. We don't wanna take too long. All right, so to explain this again, we go in through here, hit the end level script here, which will then wait for 0.5 seconds before starting the next coroutine, which is delete the level, which will then wait until we finish saving the data. And then it will send the next level information to our game world manager. And then it'll delete this level. So this level should be deleted before the game world manager gets the spawn new level. And then it waits for like 0.2 seconds, which after sending through here, it should be like lightning fast to destroy the level. And then it's going to instantiate the level, set it to zero, zero, set the next level name for there, and then set is loading to false, which should then remove the loading screen so the player can see what's happening. All really quick. Okay. So that should fix this op, this uh, number three here, which is when moving to the next level, box collide with each other which is causing the next level's blocks to move. We can just remove that, because that should be 100% fixed, because the blocks can't collide if the levels do not exist at the same time. So easy peasy. The next one we're gonna to try to fix is in level select, the high scores are showing all of the same scores, which is not great. We need to figure this out. So when check high scores for level one, why would it be overwriting everything? Let's take a look. So, it checks to see if the high score seconds is faster than the current seconds, which it's not going to be for the first time anyway. So then it's going to take the old high score seconds that is stored as the, the top 10 scores into here. And then it's going to take find a new value for the one that was beaten. Let me see here. Found the new value to the score that was beaten, right? Which would be whatever counter would be, which would counter constructed zero. It would, of course, be zero for the first one, as it should be. And that's going to equal the time. It's then going to go down here, and we want to move the rest of the values down the leaderboard. So, it's going to take the old top score and move it down the next one. But it doesn't seem to be doing that. Ah. Uh. For whatever reason, it's just not working. So I think we need to debug here to do debug.log. And we'll just do that for right now. Um actually let's do we'll just do one debug log, that way it's not spamming us. We'll say 
um, current value plus we'll do this plus changing we'll need to put a space here uh, is changing to and plus old hs1 i let's just show us both of these values and what they are as we're doing that so next what we need to do is if i open up my slime experiments actually i just need to open up anything don't i one moment we need to do i need to delete my save data quick So local low, slime experiments. Yeah, we're just gonna have to delete a whole folder there. Okay. So with this information here now, go ahead and unload that scene. Ignore that error. We're gonna hit play. We should throw us into here. And now we wanna start the level. Okay, so we've beaten it. Let's go to the main menu, which we can't see. The buttons don't work for some reason. We're gonna have to do it the hard way. So we hit level select, hit world one, hit this one. All the numbers are 12. Fuck, I, I forgot to look at the debug log because I'm an idiot. Try that again. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. Let's pause. So, first time, one, two, three, four, five. Why is it changing to 10, though? Because the old high score gets set here before we're even doing anything with it. Right? Oh. No. Because, yeah, that break coincides to that one. So, this break should be taking us out of the thing. Because I was thinking. What, what was causing it would be if we were checking the first level, right? And then assigning that value to the first level, and then we went through it again and did the same thing to all of them. But this should only be hitting once. Let's check. Debug.log HS check. You know what, just for the sake of it? Debug.log HS seconds equals and plus HS seconds plus um, current HS Yeah, we do. And we'll do plus old HS one zero. 
Oh, it's because I'm not moving. Right, 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 right. Let's try that. See how that works. Out of here. Into here. Let's make the new game. We go zoom, 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 zoom. So, we are seeing, we're doing the HS check once, okay, that means we're coming into here only once, and then we're doing this once, which we're confirming that the old high score is currently that. real quick so we're nowhere we're getting stuck somewhere here the logic is messed up um all this should be doing is shifting the value down by one right but it's not and then the old hs How is how is the old HS getting changed to a VAT? Hmm. Maybe it's so we. Yeah, before we even change that value. Yeah, I don't I don't see how we can possibly be having these values be ten when we're not changing the old HS value. Do I need new here? No, that doesn't even really work. Like... Because I know sometimes when you do with something like this, it's not really creating like a copy of the array. It is instead creating a, like, pointer to the array, right? So, question, what if I do old hs1 dot copy? Let's try that. So let's do new list of strings. And we want to do this dot copy to old HS1. Like that. It's a string. What's a string? What? Neither one of these are an array, right? No, they are an array. Have I been? this whole time trying to take a list and set it equal to a fucking string or uh, an array? No, surely not. No. Event tracker. I score list. You're, you're lists, right? Hey, you're lists. So why is it saying it's an array?
That's a string. That's a string. Does that somehow convert it into a string or something? No, that can't be right. That wouldn't do that. The list a string. Copy to. What about like duplicate? No. Okay, you know what? Fine. Length ten array, right? And then I think that might work. I don't know. Let's test that out and just see what the hell happens. Thank God the first level is just like run to the exit. Now we're getting somewhere. So all of them do say 999. If we hit play again and go to level select, level one, one, one. Excellent. Although, why is that only one zero? Excuse you? You dare only put one zero there, well, there should be two. Okay, so we, we figured out, I guess, the issue. It was not actually creating a copy of the string that we were assigning it. It was creating a pointer to it. Ugh, okay. But now we need to figure out the time, so we need to go to return time. So... Let's just check here. So if Seconds is less than 10. It'll do this, which will be zero, zero. All right. Which is what it should be hitting, yeah? Because yeah, it should just be hitting this for now. Why is it only turning one zero then? minutes should maybe if I do this so maybe it's like a null value so that's why it's being dumb I guess let's try one more time just to get that zero in there off we go we set our time. Let's go ahead and hit the load level. Also, why does uh, the continue button not show up? It's still doing it. Why? Bro. Oh, 
Oh, I know why. So it's doing this, right? So it is hitting this one, but minutes is still not higher than 10. So what the fuck? Hold on. Whose logic was this? God, am I an idiot? Okay, so if ours is greater than or equal to one, we want to do either of these things, which would mean if seconds is less than or equal to 10, if minutes is less than or equal to 10. Yeah. So basically, I just need to add this. into these guys. Hold on, before I erase all that, but minutes is less than or equal to 10. So that does make sense. But wouldn't I need... No, 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 no. That's fine. I just need to add a zero here and a zero here. Just remove the hours and do a zero zero here. Okay, and we can delete that. Excellent. Okay, and we just got to do the same thing basically up here, down here. However, since seconds is greater than ten for these, we just want to remove the extra zeros there. And that should fix the issue. So let's go ahead one more time. Delete our high scores. Hit play. Hit new game. We'll run through this bad bitch real quick. Run up here. Bam. Game is done. Undo play. Double select, world, one. There we go, the values are in there properly now. All right, okay. That's done. So let's take this. Boom. Okay. Huzzah. Now. Take this pause menu and put it down here. Let me hit play. We're just gonna hit new game. I'm gonna hit escape. The buttons still don't work. Why? Why not? There's nothing in the pause menu that is causing issues, right? Maybe this? No? Um... They're all just the buttons. Surely not, no? Okay. What if I just do that? No? Okay. That. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay. 
complete the text box. No, for some reason I still cannot do it. Why? Let's try this again. Hit new game. Okay, can't do anything here, but what if I were to move the pause menu over to the right? So I can't hit anything, okay. What about over to the left? Still nothing, okay. What if I take this canvas and Do it all. Come on. Why? Why can't I not click the buttons? They were working previously, right? And now they're just not. Set layer two gooey there. Let's set that to one. Now what happens? Still nothing, okay. Still have the click thing attached. What if I do screen space camera? Let's just hit play. Additional shader channel. What happens when I frickin' pause? I'm gonna hit escape. Reset that equal to pause, do stop movement, which does time scale. It can't be a time scale issue, can it? Where every single game I've made with buttons and shit has had issues with the buttons not working for some reason. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, stretch, and think about why the hell this is not working. Be right back.
Why? Why is it not working? <sighs> so the pause menu gets set to active by an audio source. Not because of the text, is it? Coal transparent mesh. Coal at the vertex color alpha close to zero meshes the uh I don't fucking know what the fuck that means. I don't see anything that would necessarily be like, no, you can't click me. But you know what? Let's just test something out. Let's change this so that the Resume text is uh, hiding a little bit there. And let's see if maybe I can click it on the left side now. Nope, still not. Okay. At least we know it's not that. at all. Button's not working at all. Let's see. The button won't even highlight a mouse over. Tried using an event system. The canvas has a graphic raycaster component. Don't the raycasters go on the camera? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. If I had a graphic raycaster on the camera component, gotta... Okay, let's just uh, close the pause menu for a second. So they're saying something about... This graphic raycaster? Is that causing issues? I guess let's just try deleting this. I don't know why that would cause issues, but... Still nothing, so... I didn't do jack diddly squat for me. Um, do I have any other GUIs? Kind of do. Try to move it from here as well. And then I then click buttons then. No. Let's re-add the graphic gray caster then. Blocking objects. Hmm, what does that even mean? Hard to see in that thing there. Additional shader channels. I don't even know what that means. I'm gonna remove that. So this is saying I have an event system. I tried the event system option force module active. I only have one canvas. Canvas has a graphic ray case component. Canvas render mode is set to screen space overlay. Also try the other two. Camera didn't work. The button is a child of the canvas. The button is marked as interactable and calls a function from a script. There are no other HUD elements They're in the same space as the button. Added the Unity uh, event system to my script. Tried putting the button on a different places in the hierarchy. Yada yada. Hmm. 
Don't break casters go on camera. Um, managed to find the problem, although I'm already wrong. And there's a horizontal default sect. Anyone else has a similar problem, select your canvas game object and look at his components. They have the following canvas, canvas scaler, raycaster, canvas group. Select the canvas group component and check the box of interactable block raycast. Really? Canvas group and canvas group. Interactable and block ray casts. It works like a charm, they said. Okay. Let's see if that works for me. It is not. Okay. I want to check one thing. Now that I'm, I, I read some stuff and thought about some stuff here. New game. I noticed there's one thing between this and the other menu that is not there, which is the event uh, manager or event, whatever the hell it was, this little thing, the event system. And I'm thinking maybe that has something to do with tracking buttons. So. Why don't we attach this to the GM? Hit play. I did it. All right, so if you ever have issue with buttons not working, make sure your scenes that you're using as an event system, because apparently those are needed in order to take input. Yep. Splendid use of my time right there. Okay. Buttons won't work in pause menu. Fixed. Huzzah! Okay. But now real quick, I, uh, want to hit save. Let's open up our main menu canvas and our level select. Well, actually, hold on. Before we do that, the continue button wasn't showing up. What dictates the continue button again? If next level does not equal that. Next level should be set here, yeah? Am I missing a name from this thing? No. Let me go back. Let me just hit play. Uh, event tracker. Next level has no name. Why? I loaded in and since it spawned the level, it should be setting the name, yeah? an eye on that next level there. So there is a next level now. However, it didn't get saved because right. You have to beat right because it can't have a next level 
if there is no thing. Okay. Right, I understand. Okay. So basically, the level script. We want to do. No, we don't, do we? I mean, there are going to be so few times when the player beats level one and then does not beat level two. I think I can just leave that as a, a bug and not have to deal with it. Otherwise, I have to do like, is this level one? Um, I guess I could do. Where is a uh, finished level script? And it saves there. So if I do et dot next level equals, um, next level dot name. If I do that, I think that's what it's doing over here in the game manager too, right? Next level level dot name, right? Is that not? Oh, I need to get this. There we go. All right, so now it'll take the name and then it'll save it. So that should do its thing. Okay. Right. That should take care of that. Okay. But yeah, now level select. What do we want to do with this? So, um, level select panel open. And. One button, and then we want to go with uh, that. No, not that. The world panel is world one. And then let's go ahead and just highlight all of these and open them up. So, what is causing? the issue with me clicking the wrong buttons at a certain point. What the hell is this? I don't think the text would cause this, would it? I guess it would, wouldn't it? Since technically the text is part of the button. I don't want to do that. I want to grab this specifically. Move it up to there. But I think that the issue is the, uh, the the white bounding box and not the yellow one. I think. Alternatively, I could just be like, uh, let's just make actual fucking labels for these, right? Might as well do that. We'll just have buttons without text. Okay. So let's spread all of these out. Oh man, I'm gonna do this for every single fucking level too. <laughs> Ow. 
Okay. Why did it make the bounding box so big? I'm gonna delete him. Screw it. Times is gonna be fun. Oh wait, but now that I've done that, if I were to, uh... of course I only think about this now after I've done this, but now if I want to hide a level and it's text, I'm going to have to do both and not just hide the level button. How I just heard moving? <laughs> like, in real life? It was weird. Shouldn't be any cows near here. Alright. So if I... I have 68. 215. What if I do that for all of these? So, negative 68 and then 215. I mean, kind of. Is there any other values that are there? In that. Um, I don't see any other value numbers. But like, what's this? Okay, well, 68, 215, 68, 215, 68, 215. I can just go negative 68, then 215. And then I have them all roughly figured out. I'm gonna have to edit them a little bit though. I really wish that this like Box did something. You know? Like, I wish there was like a value for this number.
Okay. A value for this number. Yeah, right, right, right. I wish there was like a value or numbers for this field that I could just manipulate and be like, yeah, I want to uh, change these. But I think that's going to do it for me right there. So there's no real good way to test this um, besides going into the world and doing it. So let's go ahead and hide world one. Actually, we need to hide all these buttons. Add all the buttons. Hide world one. Hide the world panel. Do I need to hide the world panel? I don't think I hide the world panel. I think I keep it up. Um, world one button gets hidden though. And then the level select gets hidden. All right. So I can just open these up from here without having to beat levels. So let's do this, that. Then we're going to do just select world one make that easier open up all of these so now if i click near the bottom near the top it's not the same so yes the text boxes that were for some reason apparently part of the problem i'm curious hold on if i take this level seven let's move that like right in the middle right there of level three I click here and clicks that. Okay. Now. Yeah. I was hoping there would just be like a really easy way to uh, make this like invisible. Why don't I search that real quick? Unity hide UI element from Raycast? Is that what it's called? How to disable hide elements without disabling them. Well, hide certain elements without actually disabling them. So I have toggle turns off another UI element on and off. How can I choose without changing the active state of the element? Disable the component? That's not what I want to do. Um, How about instead of hide, I use create event UI element from Raycast. How do I stop the UI from breaking my Raycast? Yeah, I have a UI that can be enabled and disabled, but it blocks my Raycast when it's disabled. How do I fix this? I'm removing the graphics Raycaster on the root canvas. That's what I want to do. Um, Unity, how to click through UI objects. Allow clicking through some Unity objects. Here we go. I'm using this pointer over game object method to prevent clicks through UI elements. It's worked perfectly fine, but I want to click through some UI elements with different tags. How can I do that? If you want some UI elements to basically be invisible to clicks, there are a few options to set. Uh, set raycast target to false on individual elements. Make the elements you don't want to part of a raycast group. There's no raycast here, yeah. Or, guys, that's ignore raycast. What if I do that? It doesn't help either. Do I need a...
Let me hit that real quick. And then try that again. Nope. Still does nothing. Damn. I hate this whole UI stuff. There should just be like a, a tick box or something that you can set. That's like, hey, do not touch this. What does a canvas render renderer do? What if I remove this? Oh. Depends on it, apparently. Uh, canvas group? I had canvas group and uncheck blocked recast. It'll work. Thank God. Okay. Let's undo that. And then uh, open up world select. Don't care about the world buttons. Let's open up. Maybe I should open this one up and look at just to make sure that I didn't actually leave that one moved. Okay, perfect. Those are fine. Ignore world one. World two through five, we want to open up. Level one through ten, boosh. We're gonna have to do all of these. You know what, I can probably just... Actually, what I could do is just up in this field, do text, TMP, and for all of these, every single text that I have, because we don't care about clicking on text anyway, the text is never going to be a box by itself. You do canvas group, untick block ray casting. That should just fix the issue for me. And then I can go and just ignore all this, yeah? If I uncheck that, check that again. Okay. Wanted to see. Let's minimize that, minimize that, minimize that. We'll select all of these, set those to that. Hide world one, hide world two. Worlds, there we go. Okay. Let me hide the. So let's test out the other worlds real quick just to see what happens. Select. Um, we want to open up world panel two. And all of these, let's go ahead and click on them. We can see when we hit that, it works. Oh my god. Perfect. Perfect. Oh my gods. Okay. I like how I looked up the answer and didn't actually find the answer exactly. And I was just like, what if I just try this? And it worked. I love it. So, button hitboxes is weird. Yep. And we know that number five, the reason for this is simply because we don't have a, a picture in for them. So it's not really doing anything. Did I have a error somewhere? Yeah. That's the cause of that, so. Let's make that number two on our thing to do. And now, first of all, before we forget load scene, we need to add world 10 into here. Almost forgot about that. There we go, level 110 is in. Oh, okay. Save everything. Unload that scene. 
minimize the canvases. I don't need to see those anymore. All right. Okay, so. I'm going to open up my Unity Games pool, not that one. This one. Uh, Slime experience. I'm just going to delete my save data. And we're going to go ahead and build the game real quick. So build settings. That should be fine. We'll hit build. Save it to slime experiments. And we just wait for it to build. And we got an error, which I'm pretty sure I know what the fucking error is. Yeah, so sometimes we'll see like this, for example. I don't know where this came from. This package manager manager thing. It shows up sometimes for some reason. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google this real quick. So Unity um, scripts, no, Unity, and then maybe Visual Basic, Visual Studio. Um, sometimes adds the using Unity editor dot package manager line. I know I did not type this in here. So I don't know why it's showing up. Um, but the solution to fix that build error is you just click on it, go to the script line in question, and you just delete that code. I don't know why that code gets added sometimes to certain like uh, scripts, but it, it does. And it just does not make sense. So you just delete that line of code and everything should be fine. It's happened for numerous scripts for basically every game build I've made. But like when you create a script by default, it only shows up with these three lines. So I don't know where that comes from, why they're getting added, because I'm not adding them. So it's, it's weird, it's peculiar. Anyway, we can now launch the game. I'm gonna pause my music. And we can go ahead and launch the game itself and kind of do some play testy stuff. And by that, I mean we want to go to paint. And yeah, I'm going to fill it over there. So, new game. Yay. First of all, we're going to wait until the dialogue finishes. And then we can go from there. Which might be better to use paint.net, to be completely honest. That way I can, I'm more familiar with that one. Anyway. So this is the game as an actual game running. So let's go ahead and we'll do control shift, or not control shift, windows shift S, which allows us to take a screenshot of an area we select. And then in paint, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to here. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna just cut out our slime and the timer. So we're going to grab the color from that, that, that. And we're going to grab the color from that one, paste it into there. And we're just going to go, make sure, double sure I'm not adding too bad here. Game information. Let's go with the uh, one experiment stuff. I'm going to save it into this pool for sure. Level pictures. Do that. We'll do one dash one. I didn't. I didn't save it in the folder. Let's so go to file, save as again. Go drag it over here. Two levels. Okay. So cancel. Go over there. So let's beat this level, so we can get to the next one. And take the next picture.
Then we'll just wait a little bit here. We don't want to edit the level by moving until we have it open here. And we can do that, and we'll just do the same thing where we remove our slime, remove the timer, grab the colors. Maybe I should just do it like that. Now I have both colors already selected. I don't have to keep getting a sample of them. Then we can do file, save as, 1-2. Make sure we click into the level pictures this time. There we go. All right, moving on. Next level. This will also be a good way to play test all of our levels in the uh, game here so that we are sure that they all mesh out pretty fine. Make sure there's no other errors that we're experiencing that we're, we're not sure about here. I totally forgot what the hell I was doing. We need to reset the level. Okay. I was like, I'm gonna solve the level. And I was like, wait, aren't I supposed to be trying to uh, get pictures? So we're gonna go boop and boop. Then I just gotta switch back to the bucket tool. Put that stuff in there. File, save as. 1-3. Done. On to the next one. Also, I could just test right now to make sure that the settings opens. That's not supposed to be there. See? This is why we test things in the actual game environment. So three. In the pause menu, when opening settings, the reset level button shows up. Weird how that works. So, let's exit without saving. Yeah, I think that happens for everything. So let's just add a, a note down here. Happens for every button. And I think that's happening because the reset level button is below these panels, which is, you know, what happens sometimes. That's just fine and dandy. That, that should be an easy fix if it's the issue I'm thinking it is. Music? Music? Weird. Maybe because I hit X without saving in it. There's something weird. Okay. God, this level is so weird. Um Do you guys see what I'm seeing? The uh there's an extra block right there. And I think there's like an extra block or two over in this area here as well. I'm pretty sure that's an extra block, too. What the fuck happened? What happened? The other level got destroyed before this one loaded, right? How did it... Also, that block right there is another one as well. So this is level 1-4. Uh, so... Level 1-4 has extra blocks that show up. If we compare it to this, it does look kind of like potentially some of the blocks from this level moved over. But that should not be the case since we're deleting the entire level, including the blocks. which means I can't take a screenshot of this one because there's extra blocks. Or I could and just say, screw it. I don't think I can put this level anyway. I think there's a 
I think the block in the upper right is going to screw me since I can't, I don't think I can move that one. I might not even get to that point to be honest. I'm gonna have to go this way and push those blocks there so I can push this block up. I should be able to squeeze between those and push these down. I'm gonna have to push these up and I think there's just enough room for me to go like that. I just pushed it into there further, and I can't, I can't get in there now. Shit. Okay. What if I hit restart level? So it okay. That works actually. That works better for me. So yeah, now we know that for sure it's not an issue with the level itself, but with how the level loaded in. It's so weird. One dash four. Let's amend this to say caused by loading from previous level, but it shouldn't happen. We might have to do a debug.log to check whether or not the level is getting destroyed before a new one's being spawned because there could potentially be a, uh, it, it could potentially be like taking too long to delete, which could be causing the issue. How did I do that? It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Now he starts to ramble. Also, it happened here too. Definitely way too many blocks. Let's add level one, two and one dash five. To have just for grammar reasons. Man, that's crazy. Well, I guess we can just reset the level. Uh, and we're waiting for him to talk. Also, uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter if they hit the reset level button. They've probably been paying attention to the dialogue. So we can just have that. Wait. Were those two blocks always like that? The one that's like right here? I mean, whatever, man. Okay. Fuck. Picture. Picture, picture, picture. I remember what we're doing, totally. File, save as, 1-5. All right, we're halfway through getting screenshots. So one thing that I am noticing just by playing the game, it is taking no time at all to beat these levels. It's taken like 30 seconds to a minute. The most, I think one of the later levels took like two minutes, but uh, yeah. Not ideal if we're doing 50 levels minimum. Um, if each one takes a minute, that's only an hour of game time. I at least want to get two hours of game time. That way people can't just refund the game. Uh, and 
get their money back after that. If it's two hours, you, you can't get refunded on Steam. So, not that I want them to think about refunding it in the first place, but yeah, so uh, this one also has issues. So one batch six, we're adding that one here as well. Let's hit the reset level button. We're gonna have a screenshot. It's so weird. So as you can see, like I was saying, um, between the environment in Unity and the actual game, you can see a lot of difference. Like you can already tell, like when we were testing, I can't move that block? Wait, I just hit reset level and it just it, it just destroyed everything, didn't reload? What? In level 1-6, I passed through a block, and upon resetting the level, all blocks disappeared. So there has to be an error somewhere in the script because first of all this this should disappear after i hit reset level um second of all since it's not spawning the blocks back in that means that we're getting an error there so let's return to the main menu holy shit! six when returning to the main menu, the pause menu doesn't go away, and neither does the timer, which it should. Yeah, the timer's just going to be chilling there now. Okay, uh, we're going to have to figure out where our mouse is by using our uh, thing here. Okay. Now I can take our screenshot because we continued. Thank the gods. So yeah, something about resetting was causing issues there. Also, you didn't know you can hit control um, and it'll show this little like radar of where your mouse is. You have to configure this in Windows. I forget exactly what the setting is called. It's in your, your Windows mouse. Cursors where if you hit control, it will be like, hey, you can uh, I forget that I get them here. Did I already get this picture safe? Is that what I did? Am I like freaking out, man? Let me go to uh I did already grab a picture of this. Although, yeah, it's, it's fine, it works. Okay. Yeah, that was when I slipped through the block and I was like, oh, shiza. Let me uh, just copy and delete all that. Over here, let's just finish this level. Actually, let, let's test this out. Reset level. Yeah, an error definitely happened because the pause menu did not close. Reset level again, and errors happened. So let's see, an error happens when resetting the level multiple times, might the other levels too. Okay, we're gonna go back to the main menu, confirm exit. Get out of there. I'm gonna have to fumble around here to hit continue. Do you, uh, do you hear the music? Seven. When returning to main menu and 
continuing the game, the music. Doubles up and stuff. Question mark. Can't tell what's happening. Am I hearing the main menu music and the level music with like extra main menu musics or extra level musics or like what? What is what is happening? So we need to get that one open. And then I actually realized you don't need that second block when I was doing this. On my own. You, I realized you could just do this. I'm gonna completely ignore that second block. Um, block. This is when I started lining up the blocks, isn't it? And then the entrances are now too small because you can't trigger them. Block. Okay. Um, so let's add that here. So eight. Well, the one dash six onward. Can't and levels. Excellent. Okay. Let's go back to the main menu. And let's go to the level select. World one. Let's load world one. Let's load level. This isn't level one. This is level two. Holy shit. Holy actual shit. Also the music. I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, also this should be eight. This should be nine. Um, when selecting a level, um, Level one is level two, actually. I'm not sure if that's the same for the rest of them, but I, I wanted to test this out anyway. So reset level. We have an error and a block's gone. It should be zero index. I thought I did, but I don't know. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna alt F4 and get out of there. Music is starting to get a little bit insane. Okay, so we, we figured out a lot of errors. Um, first of all, go to our assets. Or is it GUI? Yeah, GUI was where I put them. So let's grab our first six screenshots. Go ahead and get these to be proper quality here. There we go. Okay. And then now we need to, where is the level things here? Oop. And then I can just hit the block here. If I drag those over, let's go ahead and hit play. I just want to see if those show up properly now. So hit level select, level one. They didn't update. Well, I guess, yeah, right. I have to actually drag them over to these. I forgot. But now if we hit that, we can see um, that they are showing up the proper levels here for us to select. Fuck. I just realized. I fixed level one's high score problem, but not the others. Shit. Okay. High scores is still an issue for all but level one. Smiley face. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> well. 
We came up with so many errors today, y'all. We, we managed to finish the first 10 levels, but now we are stuck with errors. God damn. Okay. Obviously, the, the, the easiest error to fix right now is going to be if we go to our levels, 1-6, we go to the end level uh, thing here, we select this, and we just make this a little bit bigger. That way our character can actually get into the area. Easy as that. Hit save now. Then, actually, if I do that, I think, I think that would work. Let's go ahead and save. Um, Let's load that level and test it out. Make sure that actually triggers. So let's go to level select, world one, level five. Load level. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and grab our little guy. And I'm just gonna drag him all the way down to here. Right. And then we can uh, apparently not get through it. What? You back away. You. I shouldn't have to make it too huge. What? Sticking out that far for that one. At one six, sticking. Okay, I can see where that might be a little bit of a problem. Um, so let's get this back to here. Let's change the radius to zero point eight. What nine? Zero point nine, I think, is fine. So if I do that for the rest of these two. Um, radius to 0 0.9. And then, okay, that should be good. Honestly, I should just change this from a circle collider to a box collider and just put it like right in front, but. Meh. 0 0.9. That should work. Save. 0.9. As long as there's not like a way for the player to like touch a side and uh, get into it like that, it should be fine. Okay. So those are done. Let's go into our prefab. Level prefab. 0 0.9. Save. I'm gonna create a folder called uh, world-specific prefabs. That so we can just drag this uh, one over there. Yosh, okay. Uh, so. Just in case I'm gonna do this one too. Zero point nine. Boosh. 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 Okay. So that issue's fixed. So from level six onward, can't end levels should be corrected now. Now this one's gonna be eight. And this one's gonna be nine. Yay. Okay. Yeah. So Ryle. You remember how when I was making the high scores, you were like, couldn't you just use a method for that? And I was like, I could, but then I'd have to rewrite everything. Well, I have to rewrite everything now anyway. So I think it's time for that method we were talking about. So we're gonna create a method. 
And that's going to be um, private void do high score thing. I'm going to call it for now. Um, basically, we need to take all of this into here. So what do I need now? Okay. So, I think, do I take this and put that into the do h thing? I think I do. So let's, this is going to be so many errors, but that's fine. Copy that, put that there. We didn't want to do, this is a, a list of strings. So we want to do a list string, call it, um, the et top et top nah, 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 nah. et top scores let's call it that okay and then rather than doing this we'll do et top scores and we'll do et top scores and we'll do et top scores and we'll do et top scores so i think that should work for what we want to do because we learned in level one or the level one's high scores that just going like string equals and that directly was basically creating a pointer to the thing. So if we just pass in the value, we should then be able to get away with doing this. That's the hope. We'll see if that's correct. So what we're gonna do we're just going to come through here all the way down the 12,000 lines that we have. I'm just going to comment them all out. Son of a bitch. I clicked again. Okay. That's okay. We can just do a, this now. Right at the bottom. Collect all of that and then I can go uh, down to case two. There we go. And we're just going to comment all that out. That were the only errors we have are here, which means all we need to do, or all we should have to do, is do. I forgot what I named the method already. Uh, do HS thing. Right, so do hs thing, and then we want to do et dot um, level one top ten. That's all we want to do right now. Okay, and real quick, I'm gonna I can open up a new. Okay, you know what? One second. I'm not sure what would happen if I just open up a uh, empty folder. I can do this with so we're gonna hide the screen real quick just in case something not TOS shows up I'm gonna create a new folder here called saved data I'm gonna move these two folders into here what do you mean that a file is harmful okay so we're gonna save and I'm gonna move this over to here and oops, probably want to see the monitor now, don't you? Okay, so I've made it so that the high scores are gone, so we can redo a high score. I check to see what happens with the method. So first of all, um, before we finish this time, we probably want to open up our GM 
my tracker here. See the times. So, one second. I noticed that um, if, if we pause the button and we try to hit WASD, we still move. So I need to do when paused, um, player can still move and cause the animation to happen. So don't do that. We'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, so we're gonna end it here. I didn't get an error for the high score. However, the event tracker did not change. Okay. It's less than ideal. Um, okay. And because the event tracker didn't change, it's not going to save the next high scores. So. Yeah. So sending the method down here. Oh my god. Sending the method down here, it uh, caused some problems. But we can make it work. So if we do a list string. We then need to, I guess at the end, we just return ET top scores. So after everything is done, we do here, return ET top scores. So when we do that, we're passing this value in. We're doing our, our stuff with it. And then basically making the new high scores thing. Then we're returning it to up here. So we can then do, um, I guess, et dot level 10 top 10 equals. Actually, I'm just now realizing this is level 10, not level 1. So. Let me just real quick hit play. So it did work. I just had the wrong text there. Never mind. Okay, well, never mind then. Never freaking mind. It did work. Okay, goddamn, I'm tired of scrolling down. Okay, so we just need to remove the return statement, and we need to remove this and just replace it with void once again. And then everything should work. We just have to go through each of these things, each of the cases, and uh, fix our shit. It, uh, it might just be easier to delete everything and just start fresh. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna go and then we're going to go up a little bit here, and we're just going to hit that button, which will delete all of that. OK. Uh, OK, so it's going to be case 2, case 3, case 4, case 5, case 6, case 7, case 8, case 9, and case 10. Oh, I didn't actually mean to do exactly 10, but that works for me. So we need to have this be level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six, level seven, level eight, level nine, and then level 10. Now we gotta do this 40 more times. Okay, at least it's a lot more concise now and we don't have a 1300 or whatever line of code. Also. Music, let's go. Thank you. Got it. 
You know, I wasn't expecting to have to fix the high scores like this. But, you know, thank God for Ryle's previous um, suggestion to use a method for this, because otherwise I would have to literally go through and, like, add this line of code 50 times. And uh, that just would not have been fun to do. So, I'll just do this now. <laughs> okay. I think the easiest way to do this would just be to copy this. Paste it. And then we just do that. So unfortunately, I don't think the uh, control shift down thing is gonna help us here. I think if we do a what is it? Is it alt control down? No, it was alt or shift alt. Yeah, this thing. Oh, maybe it will work here. Okay. But not like that. Okay, so we just need to go. Helps us actually hit the right keys again. So if I just put a one there. Yeah, it's going to do that, but I'm not going to go down here and just do that. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one, we can just make 20. Sweet. And we just do the same thing once again, except I can't do it for this line because there's characters in this one, so... Okay, and then we're just gonna go zoop, do two. Then I can get rid of the extra lines here. Too many down arrows. Too many down arrows! Okay. And that's the 20s completed up to the 30. Can I shift alt click? Uh, when I shift alt click, it does this. It still makes like a line through all of them, which is unfortunate. So I can't just like do a couple here and there, which is what I want to do. Fours here. Alt click just moves the cursor, fortunately. It's like I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Why do computers have to be so stupid? It's like they only do us what do what they do what we tell them to do or something. It's fucking weird. Not 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 a four there. Anyway, I'm done. So yeah, let's go ahead and remove. My scores are still an issue because now they shouldn't be, but they're they might still give us some trouble later on if I know my luck. Okay. So, the paused player being able to move when the game is paused. That should be a very easy fix. We just gotta open up player move. And we wanna check in here. Um, not only is player allowed to move, uh, let's get it. Is that actually? When we hit pause, player allows to move. Yeah, player allowed to move goes there. What changes the animation?
Maybe I do is moving equals false here. That might do it. Let's just start a new game. So if I hit escape and try to move, I can still move. Let's uh. Hmm. So is moving is is false like it should be? Why is WASD causing my little slime friend to move? I can't even fucking check that. Maybe that's why. Maybe because I'm getting this error. That's happening. So you know what? Let's close Unity. Open it up again. We'll just reload so we don't have that stupid error. Because maybe that's what actually caused the issue and it's not actually an error. Okay, let's try this again. Nope, it still does happen. Okay. But we can open up Animator now. So the only way that we're moving, we're going to is slime move, is when these are true and false. So if is moving is false, I shouldn't be doing slime move, yeah? Is that not true? So... Oh no, I was... Right, I was selected on the uh, other thing. Hey GM, question. Play allowed to move is true? It it shouldn't be. So when you hit escape, which opens up the pause menu, stop movement happens. And stop movement, that's player allowed to move equals false. So is it not setting it equal to false? Or is there somewhere that is setting start movement equal to true when it shouldn't be? What is happening? It's so weird. I hit escape, it opens the pause manager, and then it's just like, hmm, no. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. It's this. because the loading finishes here. Yeah, because we're not loading, it automatically sets it to true. I could remove these. And then in Game World Manager, once the level's created, I can just do gm.player allowed to move equals true here. and also to here. And that should fix the issue now. Let me first of all, restart whatever the game. And we'll hit new game, hit pause. And now if I hit WASD, I don't move, perfect. All right, got one, completed. Now then, when selecting 
a level. Level one is actually level two. So that should be in our main menu script. The level select panel, we need to just go over. Okay, so let's see, level select. I like this level. Select this level. I've only done it for the first ones, I forgot. Oh no, okay. Shouldn't I have a, yeah, here. So we select the world, we select the level, and if we look in our main menu, Level select, world panels, world one, button one, tells us to go to one. Right. Right, that, that is the issue. It's not indexed correctly. So, level selected, and then it goes to start game, which just does that. Game World Manager, it checks for the selected level, which should be GM level selected minus one here, I think. Let's just double check this real quick. Level 10 going to be level 10, which would be level 9, really. Yes. That should fix the issue. So let's hit level select, world 1, and we hit 1. It shows us that, and we hit load level, and it brings us to level 1. Yay! Woo -woo 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 -woo! Yeah, so it was just a matter of that one little line right there. Okay. When returning to the main menu and continuing the game, the music doubles up. Okay. Which I feel like it shouldn't. Let's hit play. We're going to go continue. First of all, let's mute our music that's playing normally. Main menu. There's two event systems in the scene. Is that what's causing issues? Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? Shouldn't be. Fuck. Okay. I know what's happening. Let me show you what's happening. So, we load into our game. And as you can see, we have the, in our Don't Destroy on Load, we have the GUI, uh, the GUI and the uh, GM script, right? And we have all this normal stuff, whatever. I wanna go to the main menu. Let's go back. Uh-oh. It looks like, because the main menu has the GM and the GUI, it duplicated them, which means it duplicated the music source and the music source. Uh-oh. So I guess that means if we uh, hit escape here, we resume, and then hit new game again, and then, uh-oh, play music again. 
I guess the first music source would keep the previous one, right? So we go back to the main menu. We have another GM. World War music, no music, no music. Okay, that's fine. We fixed the music looping problem, but now we have this issue with the multiple GMs. So um, we're gonna have to go here, get rid of event system. I'll open up the GM script, because the issue is right here. We need a new event in our event tracker. It needs to be public bool has loaded equals false. We're going to say has loaded once equals false right there. And then what we can do is we can check here. Hold on. Let's do uh, event. I guess we can do if game object dot find game object with tag gm dot get component. Oh, we gotta close that there. Dot get component event tracker. Or I guess it's just called et now. Right. Dot. As loaded once equals false we want to do this and we also want to do um, this equals true let me actually do that first then we can do that so what this should do is it should manipulate this ET value to happen once. And I'm hoping that it's not going to get confused with multiple things. So let me check. Um, let's try this again. I might have to just actually try something completely different, which makes sense. So we'll do this, and we'll do this, which it added another GUI, but it did not. It didn't do what I wanted to exactly. It still had these come up, but... <gasps> I know what I can do. Here. Um, if loaded once is false, else we want to destroy the GUI and we want to then destroy this dot game object. So now, if we do this, what should happen is right when the GUI and the GM wake up, they're assigned here. Those are already awake. They're never going to run through that line of code again. But now, if we go to New Game, go back to the main menu, and whatnot, we're going to get one error about multiple event trackers. But the GUI and the GM are gone now. We can go back to the new game again without issue. Okay. Perfect. Now, although you know what I could do so I don't have this error show up. Um, let's open up the game world. Let's take this event system. We're going to put it here. I'm going to copy it and paste it into here as well. That way we have event systems in both by default, and I don't have to worry about them 
causing issues. So let's save, unload this scene, and let's just make sure that the pause menu buttons work again. We don't want to have them not work. So we'll go to new game, hit that, and then the menu buttons do work. Okay, cool. So moving this one over here, getting our music again. Music doubles up and stuff. We can get rid of that one now. Um, so, next our issue is when returning to the main menu, the pause menu doesn't go away, and neither does the timer. So, that is in our... Look at that. Inverse block, I don't think we need that one now. Red sign script has been moved anyway. Um, player move we do not need. What do I need with this? I need to get the... Oh, the main menu script, is it? No, it's uh, a pause menu script. Open this bad boy up. Okay, so... Also, one thing, um, in the pause menu, and like I said, the reset level button was below the panels, I think, so we move this up here, and then we try to launch the, uh, the game, and we hit escape, and we go to literally any of these. As you can see, the, the reset level button is no longer um, showing up there, so we can cross that one off. Where was that at? Right here in the pause menu opening settings uh no reset button shows up so we can get rid of that that is now solved since we corrected the order of things um so yeah when we return to the main menu the pause menu is not going away so let's see confirm quit to main menu panel pops open and we confirm it here. However, right, because I just assumed that this would be destroyed when we did it, because I forgot that we added it into the thing that's never destroyed. So we actually have to close the window again. So what we need to do is take the confirm main menu dot set active to be false. I'm going to do this before we load the, uh, the menu here. And also, we want to take the uh, pause. Wait, I don't think I can do that. I can, I can this, this dot game object dot set active is false. So now, if we go back to the main menu, it should go away. All right, well, let's try that. So start. New game. Also, I'm going to move this down a bit. There we go. Okay. So we go to the main menu. Yes, I want to confirm exit. It closes. The timer, however, also stays up there, which is not ideal. We need to hide the timer. What we need to do over here, does the timer show up? It does not. Is GM in the, is timer in the GM? No. Where is the timer? My timer is technically in GM, right? Uh, it was in the GUI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need to do I thought I had a tag. Whatever. We'll just make a new tag called timer. Save. It should be fairly easy now. So, right, I have to do that again. Timer. Okay. Then we select the timer. We add a tag to timer called timer. Then, when we are returning here, we want to do 
game object dot find game object with tag timer dot set active false. Well, set it inactive. Easy peasy. Okay. So now that takes care of our turn to main menu. Pause menu doesn't go away, and you notice the timer. Okay. Oh boy. So next are the ones that are interesting. Oh, incidentally, the uh, in level select thing. I think I can get rid of that one, right? Let me delete my current save data. And I'll copy the other save data here. Yeah, so now level two and yada yada do actually work. All the way up to level, I think, six. those work, I can get rid of that line there. Yatta! Ugh. Fuck. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Let's see if we can knock these last ones out. So, level one, four, one five, and one six. Extra blocks are showing up, possibly caused by the last level load. We'll check that out later. What is important is the resetting of the blocks it's causing issues. So load in and let's go to world six, load level. Okay, so we're gonna hit reset level and we're gonna hit reset level. We got an object or an error, which is what I thought was happening. And we're getting rid of this, this one's causing issues. So it is the item count is like that? What? Oh no! Is it? No. When you instantiate and then delete an object, it gets rid of it here? That doesn't make any sense. If that was the case, when I make projectiles, fire them, and then delete them... Okay, let's, let's test this one more time. Let's reset the level once. Now, if I look at this, they're missing game objects. Why? It's like resetting is killing them or something? What? What? One second. Let me do a search here. Unity. Instantiating an object from a serialized field makes that serialized field say missing game object. Serialized field objects initializing when playing in editor but not in build. I don't think that's what I want. That's not what I want. Um, Unity object reference plus serialized field. What am I missing? Unless
Let's check something. So here we have our movable blocks. What if I delete this movable block? Missing game object. Did I just copy the damn movable locks over here? Hold on. Okay. Let's go to our level prefabs. Level 1, 6. Let's get rid of all of these and just set it to 0. Um, and then we want to go to our prefabs. Baka. I can just then, well, no, let's actually just drag them all over. Okay. So we have moved them over now from the actual prefab library. Let's check once again to see what happens if I load the level. Hit that button. And if I were to say delete this movable block, it does not get deleted from there now. So if I were to hit reset level, I can then do reset level, reset level, reset level, reset level, and I get no errors on this map. Which means <sighs> I forgot, and some of the maps are just being stupid. Okay. Um. Hmm. What other level did we chest out? Was it one three or something? Or did I literally just test that one? Also, yeah, I think we tested one two, but I figured out that uh. It didn't work, and I was like, oh, I guess we're having an error. But in reality, I just had no spawn points for this, I guess. That's weird. So yeah, no wonder the block couldn't respawn on this one. It just had no blocks to respawn. Okay, there. Should take care of that one. So, in theory, if I were to reset any other level, it should work. Let's try level 1-5. Load level. Reset level. Reset level. Reset level. Reset level. Reset level. Perfect. That one works. Let's go to main menu. I think I just noticed something wrong. A couple of things wrong there, maybe. Let me mute the, the off game music here. So let's go to level select. Let's test level four. Uh, why not? Reset level. Reset level. Reset level. No errors. Okay, perfect. Main menu. Return to game. When I hit return to game, the music stops. And then when I hit confirm exit, those don't come back. They should though. Huh. So can I hit the new game button? I can, but it gives me an error. That is saying GM isn't working. But it's right there. How bizarre. How truly bizarre. So when I return to the main menu, fuck. I know why. 
because it tried to get the other GM, and that's what it awoke to. So we're right back where I started with the problems, aren't I? So just to point out what my issue is here, um, when we go into the game, we're fine, right? Because we have the GM and the GUI and all that good jazz. But when we go back to the main menu, uh, a new GM and GUI load up that the new main menu grabs. And that's the new GM and that it's trying to use. So even though we have a GM here, it's uh, doesn't like that. Okay. So first of all, main menu script awake. What if I delay this a little bit more so that uh? The other GM has time to die. And then we can get rid of it. Although, alternatively, what we could do is we leave this at one. And then we make a while loop called while. And this is while um, so first we want to do uh, game object list GMs equals game object find game object with tag gm. Game object not what? Find game objects. Oh, find game objects with tag gm. And so this will find all the things that have been tagged with gm, put them into a list. Then we do while gm gms dot length is greater than one. So if there's two GMs, for example, we are going to have issues. So what we will want to do, so while GMs dot length is greater than one, we want to do GMs dot clear or um how do I how do I empty dot empty? Hmm. How do you empty an array? Unity, how to empty an array. It's where it was like clear or empty. It's it's array dot clear. Okay, apparently it just, it just didn't prompt me. I knew it! I freaking knew it! Um, there's no argument given. Wait, what? There's no argument given that corresponds to the required parameter array of array array int. Do I have to do array dot clear gms? Name array does not exist. Do I have to do up here using system dot arrays? That? No, surely not. What? So what the hell was it telling me? Okay, let me go back to Google. How to clear an array? Um. 
using system. Okay, so I do need another using. So using system. And we need to do array.clear GMs, comma, zero, comma, array, or I guess GMs dot length. And that clears all of it out. Um, so that should mean that, uh, let's just do a debug, debug dot log. Uh, then we'll do GMs dot length again, just for the hell of it. Um, but after we do that, we want to do GMs uh, equals this again. What? There. All right. So basically what this while loop does is it's going to loop through this until this is false. So we're basically just going to keep going through until GMs only has one list of it, right? So let's just hit save. We'll just see what happens. So the first time that we hit play, we shouldn't have any errors or any debug stuff. So we're just going to hit new game, go to the main menu, confirm exit. The fuck you mean? Excuse me. Excuse me. No. No. Also, goddammit, I should not be able to hit escape in the main menu. Where's the pause manager? GM dot in main menu equals true. Okay, let's get that out of the way first of all. So in the main menu script, let's add another debug. Uh, so debug dot log GMs dot length. Because maybe the length is something I'm not expecting. Wait. No, that's fine, I think. Okay, so length is one, perfect. We wanna go to new game. We then want to go back to the main menu, confirm exit. What? It's just like, hmm, no. No GMs here. It's not even giving me like an error or like a, a debug message, which means it never awoke again. Um, what? Don't tell me it can only awake like once, even if you like unload the scene. Unity, let's see. If you reload a scene, does awake happen again? If the scene is loaded again, Unity loads the script instance again. So awake will be called. OK, so let's just in here, we want to do debug.log. Hey, we're waking up. Smile. Because it's saying that it should be opening. <sighs> okay. So hey, we're waking up. Smile. Perfect. And then we're going to go back to the main menu. It says, hey, we're waking up. For some reason, the co -ru The co-routine. The co-routine! Uh, 
Let me explain what happens when you pause the game. Time scale equals zero. Time scale cannot be zero for a coroutine to run. So in order to have the wait to awake script happen at all, the time scale has to equal one. Okay, go back to the main menu. Oh look, it happened. Yay. Which means I think we can actually just get rid of all of this nonsense that we typed in. Because I think that one split second is, in fact, all it's going to take for us to work properly. Yep. Although, uh, guys, I can't hit escape now. I think in here we need to do gm dot in main menu equals false as well. There we go. Actually, let's remove those. Let's add it down to here. In the game loaded area. And that should take care of the pause issue there. So, what did I just fix? I'm so, so, oh my god. So, an error happens when you're setting the level multiple times, maybe other levels too. So that was caused because of the block uh, not being assigned to the correct place. However, we also found an error with uh, the main menu going back and forth, yada, yada, yada. Um, so that is now fixed. However, however, we did find that for some reason, if we hit play, Go to new game, we have our music playing, we go return to game, it stops. So what does the return to game button do? Um, let's see. It does no exit. So it's doing this. So if we look at our music, okay, yeah. That's, uh, that's, what, that's what happened. Okay. So we are removing the slash 100, which divided it by 100 in these, because, <sighs> yeah. If you divide 0 0.5 by 100, that's just basically an amount that's impossible to hear. So that's that. Perfect. Another problem solved. So now our only remaining issue for today that we discovered is extra blocks are showing up in levels four, five, six, probably other ones as well. But if we look at the levels uh, four, five, six, um, that's really the only levels that have blocks behind them because level two, for example, only has one block here and it's like right here where this immovable block is at, so it's not gonna do anything. So what we need to do, I think, um, first of all, let's just hit play and see if we can replicate it in the uh, editor here. Let's go to level select, level three, load level. Okay. So we're just gonna go through 
and beat the game here and just see if any of the weird bugs happen. Okay, I don't see any extra blocks. Um, so it's weird that it happened before. Let's just keep playing through here and see if it happens again or not. Because it did happen on uh, 4, 5, and 6, so if we check all of them, we could at least cover our bases. Hmm. This is episode 4, this is number 5, and I don't see any extra blocks here either. I'm pretty sure if I rebuild the game and launch it, it's gonna have the same error again. Okay, well this is not helping. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So, the pause manager script I'm gonna close. Um, let's close the high scores here. So let's do this thing. So the only thing that I think would matter would be the end level script here. So if we go to game manager, we're waiting two seconds before, or 0.2 seconds before we do our thing, right? And that's being called where? On new level right there. And then immediately after current level is getting destroyed. So let's wait for, 0 0.05 seconds. And again, cannot test in this window. So what we'll do is we'll back out of this. We'll make sure all of our lovely little things are perfect and good to go. Then we're gonna hit file, build settings. I need to check and see if, yep, I need to delete the current contents of that so I can rebuild the folder once again. I got a uh, like a grip strengthener device thing. It's one of those things you like, kind of hold in your hand and you move your fingers on it. Uh, just today I got it and I've been just fiddling with while I'm thinking and waiting for stuff to load. Very fun, very fun, addicting. I've been trying to do uh, pull-ups and I've realized that my strength had gone to shit and I can barely hold myself and my hands are hurting from it. So I'm trying to get my grip strength up so that I can do stuff properly. So, okay. Let's do level select. Let's start world three. And with world three, we'll just go through here like we have been doing. And we'll see if we get the same problem where we were having multiple things open up. Um, which hopefully doesn't happen. Okay, I don't see any extra blocks, which is a good sign. So I'm not sure if what we did fixed it or if we did something that was unnecessary. Yeah. Also, maybe I should just go back through the levels and like line up the immovable blocks because it just looks kind of bad the way it is now. I think, and it wouldn't take too long. It would just take a couple of seconds. And once again, we're looking fine. Hmm. So either making the uh, time between the, when you start spawning the level, making it that like 0.3 seconds longer mattered, or uh, nothing matters. And it just sometimes freaks out and sometimes doesn't freak out. This looks fine. I got a picture for this one, right? This is six, right? Let me check, check, check. Yep. So I got a picture for six. So I guess let's just keep going and get our pictures for the uh, for the game. Oh, 
push this one up a little bit, and we're gonna come around here, push this one over to here. Up we go. Hmm. Oh, I don't even need that one, right? I can just walk past it. Go around here, push it in to the hole. Go through this. Okay. I'm going to wait for him to top, stop talking, but I can grab some more pictures. Oh, man. Also, when I was playtesting, the way I solved this level, I'll explain. Actually, I'll have to do it anyway, so I'll show you guys how I uh, fixed it. Here's the moment. So let's go ahead and grab slime, grab the time. Um, right underneath that, and that, okay, file, save as, 1-7, bam, bam, thank you, man, all right, so the way I solved this one was kind of different, um, since I knew I needed to kind of get in there, I did that, and then I took this up to here, and I pushed this one over to here, a ways. And I came down through here, and just kind of pushed it up through here, over to here, up into here. I just kind of did this with all the blocks that were in this area, so I only did like one from the other side. Oops, went into the hole, my bad. Who put these holes here? It's so difficult to move this dang block with all these holes in the way. This one actually does take a little bit of time, even if you know what you're doing. But this one's a good, like, couple minute thing. I'm actually gonna move these blocks and put them in the holes now because otherwise it, it takes so much time to push them. Then I can just fall into the thing to get sent back to the beginning. Free. All right, so I'm going to move this block over to here. I'm going to take this up to here. And I just need three more blocks. So we're going to do that one into there. I'm going to move this one up into here. There we go. Come back here to this block, which I'm going to shove over here, down here so I can push it up this way. We're going to seal this hole as well, that way I can come around through here, push, oh no. Okay, I thought the block was stuck for a second, that would have been fucked if the block could have got stuck there. Okay, we'll push these down through here. Go around and push this one out as well. And if I put them up here, I can very carefully come over here and push both at the same time. Over to here and then push them both up this way. Pushing that one there. And then push this one over, go back around, push it up to here. Over here. So even with uh, taking the screenshot of this level it still took me like only three minutes to beat this one on to the next This one Literally so easy to finish, but uh We'll just wait till he's done talking So we can get our screenshot And then we're gonna go ahead and crop that out do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. I don't think I need to show you guys what I'm doing since you already know we're gonna go file, save as, 1-8. Get that. All right, back to this. So we just gotta push this one down, push this one over. Oop, oop, uh, block stuck. 
we just follow it down and it will get pushed into the lovely exit hole and then we can follow it. Alright, so this one's fun. I love this level. This level's just, it looks neat and it, it's fun to do. I just like it. Then you see the game down there. Fuck. Mmm. I'm gonna have to cover up the game too. So. Paste that there. Cut that. Cut that. Cut out the game so the player can't see it. In the level selector. Ah, oh, fuck, I just hit save. Which means it overwrote level 8. But luckily, I can just control Z a couple of times here. And have another level 8 screenshot. Hell yeah, let's go. I mean, level 8 already exists. Yeah, override that shit. Here we go. Okay. Now, let's do this level. So, obviously the trick to this one is because the block is lower, the player will think that they have to push it to the right, and then they'll be like, oh, I can't go past this. Also, shit. Well, whatever. Whee! Okay, so let, let's make a new little, uh, thing here. Uh, it's going to be 2 in level 1-9. The pressure plate didn't trigger and let the player go past it. Weird. Um, let's actually reset and see what the hell that was about. So it does trigger. Why did I get through that first time, though? I know in the editor I tested it and it did not work. But like I said, you can't always trust the editor. So if I go with it. Oh, it tries to activate, but because I was there, it couldn't activate. Or because my hitbox touched the pressure plate. It toggled it on and off right away. Probably that one. Hitbox issue, question mark? I feel like, didn't I recently mess with the hitbox on the pressure plate? Or something? I don't recall. You know we can just push that block there. Push this one down to here and get out of its way, and then we have the exit to level 10. Oh boy. Level 10? Love to see it. Okay. Then let's just place that here. Oops, I gotta remove the guys. That, remove that. Add that, add that. File save as one dash ten. That's all the levels we need for thumbnails right now. Yay! Up the. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this level real quick. If I can get off that immobile block, Jesus Christ! I'm going to use my uh, diagonal movement strat there to get this block out of the way and up into here. Push this bad boy up here now. Into the hole. There we go. And we have to make our way back around here, past the void block. We can push this into the hole here. Spawn a block. Seal that hole. Spawn a new block. Push it over to here. Push it up to here. Push it into there. And then we are done. But of course, nothing happens because there is no next level. Oh, baby. Okay. 
so we can go to uh, quit. Yes, confirm quit. Excellent. And confirming quit does indeed work. Nice. Since we can't check that in the game, that's good to check there. So uh, this number four, extra block showed up. No idea. We can get rid of that since we uh, didn't see that happen again. We'll probably play test and have that happen again at some point, though, and I'll have to be like, God damn it, why did this happen? Because maybe it's a random glitch that occurred or something. All right, so let's set this aside. And let's go back to our level screenshots. We had one through six, so let's grab one through seven, import them, and do what we need to with them. One through five here. Boosh, boosh, boosh. Apply. Excellent. Okay. And so we can then grab our level select panel, or was it the main menu canvas? This is the main menu canvas. Um, lock that in place. Grab these, put them there. And that's it. Boosh. Bah, bah, bah. Okay. But now, but now, we do unfortunately have to go in here and actually change the buttons. So the world panel buttons here. That open. Open all of these. Or actually, I don't have to open all of them. I can just copy the thing over. But it's nice to see feedback here. So as we complete our levels, we can change the thumbnails here. Very nice, very nice. I think we'll probably do this particular thing in batches of 10. So every time we finish a world, now we just have to do it once and don't have to kill a bunch of things. So we'll have to do it five times instead of 50 times or however many times we do that. And we also don't have to replay levels too often. Mm. OK. So this is what our thing would look like now if we, we have this open. We would see our, our lovely levels that we can choose to go through and do stuff with. Excellent. Let's go ahead and hide these now. Once again, bye-bye, Johnny. OK. The world panel, I think that gets hidden. Does it? No. I think it does. I mean, it doesn't matter if it does or not, but that's fine. Let's just double check. Yeah. World panels has to be open first. We do need to make that like that. And then we can just hit save and we're done. Aside from the uh, level one nine pressure plate not working. Okay, so if we look here, yeah, it looks like we triggered it twice. We can even go to our pressure plate script if I open up a pressure plate. And if we go to this, We just want to do a debug.log called triggered uh, D. Go. So we can just double check how often it's actually triggering. Yeah. We might want to make the hitbox a little bit smaller. I've never done a 3D game, no. I've just been doing 2D stuff. I am working on a, a 3D game now as well in parallel with this one. I'm making sort of a, a, a Doom-like game, like classic Doom, where it's like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be using like 2D sprites in a 3D game space or what I'm going to do yet, but that's for a later time. Anyway, let's hit play. And we'll go to 
level select, level one, level nine. Wait, not level nine. Yeah, level nine. I was like, do I not this level? But no, yeah, yeah, it's level. Okay. Go ahead and push this in here. And we can see that, okay, for some reason, it, it triggered once, unlike in the uh, game world. So let's remove that, remove the pressure plate script. I'm just going to make the pressure plate box smaller then. The prefab, pressure plate. I've said pressure plate so much that. Wait, is this, is this, is trigger causing issues now? Cause that's the only thing I added. Maybe it's cause this is too big and I was hitting this. Cause maybe for some reason this trigger is triggering that. Surely not. Surely not. Let's test that. Okay. And because we're in the editor, we can just pause, go to scene, open this up, that up, go to items, go to the pressure plate. Now oh, that zoomed in really far. All right, so let's move this pressure plate bond trigger here. Okay, so that did not trigger stuff. So why did it trigger twice? Well, let's just set that aside for now. Okay. Let's just assume that we have this one fixed. Now that I have Now that I've done nothing. Uh, yeah, I really just did nothing there, didn't I? Let, let's make this pressure plate box a little bit smaller then. Here. Okay, save that. Okay. It, it is on the right layer, yeah. Because before there was, there was an issue where it was uh, showing up above the conveyor belt, which I didn't want it to do. So I had to move it on the right layer. But even so, it was weird that it was hitting me. It was. Strange. Anyway, um, I'm going to call it there for the uh, slime experiment. I'll show you the 3D game that I've worked on so far. Go ahead and just close out of this. Open up my, I'm calling it Gunmancer Isekai is the plan. Close out of some of these windows. We gotta wait for it to load. So this is the 3D game. If it loads. Yeah, you're not supposed to see the pressure plate in that level. It's hidden underneath the conveyor belt because at that point I had not introduced pressure plates yet. So, yeah. No, anyway, this is my uh, my 3D game that I'm making right now. Uh, basically, just started it. Only put like maybe two to three hours into it, just figuring out 3D stuff. Um, I have a player, I have an enemy, and uh, I have like a, a gun mechanic so if I press play I can move around this 3D space you got a little bit of a head bob thing going on if I come close to this enemy they'll trigger and then try to come after me and I have a gun which I can use to fire and kill the enemy with that's about everything I've done so far so yeah basically all I basically just been following a tutorial about how to like make a Doom like clone and I'm like doing what they said to do. Which they've done some stuff that I'm like, why are you doing that? 
Like they, they've made a, a couple of things like in multiple scripts that didn't necessarily need to be in multiple scripts that I've combined and stuff. But, uh, so far, so good. I have my player, I have my enemy. The really, the only thing that I was I'm curious about is how I would make like the hit registration for like a Doom kind of thing, where like regardless of what level, because I don't want you to have like up and down mouse movement. I just want it to be like left and right kind of stuff. So I wasn't sure how I would do that, but if you look at the player object here, there's this uh, capsule and if we hit play, we can go to our scene. Yeah, it's a doom like first person, always first person. And if we go over here to the enemy, and if I hit pause, there, uh, well, this capsule, it's supposed to be like, is it here? okay, it's here, never mind. It's not the capsule. The capsule is the, the player. It's the player here. So you can see this, like, uh, kind of green hitbox thing. And anything in there gets shot uh, by the gun. So if you're facing something, it gets shot regardless of the elevation or whatever. Uh, if you press the trigger, kind of what it does. And then uh, it also gets broken up by like, if there's something blocking it and you can't see the player or the enemy, uh, if there's like a wall between you and them, it shouldn't happen because of ray casting and stuff like that. But yeah, that's basically all I have so far for it. Um, I just kind of had inspiration. I was like, man, I think for my next game, I want to make a Doom-like kind of thing. And I don't think that slime experiments is going to take too long to make, since all I have to do left is basically levels and add any new thing I want to do with or deal with. So maybe a month for that. So I was like, I'll kind of figure out how to do 3D stuff while I'm doing this because, oh man, if I, if I can make this game how I envision it, this 3D Doom like one, it's going to be such a good game. Like, I want to have like main like quests kind of things where it's like a story mode type thing where you go into specifically like handcrafted levels. But then I also want to make some like procedurally generated levels where I just make like a bunch of like stock rooms and stuff like that and then have like a procedurally generated thing like automatically fuse them together to make like unique dungeons that you can just keep going through and uh, kind of makes the playtime endless as long as I have enough rooms and stuff and it's not like boring and all that good jazz. And unlike a normal first person shooter, I want to have it have like some sort of progression, like a stat system kind of. So like you can increase your strength to do more damage, you can increase your health, your maximum health by like leveling up and stuff like that. Um, I think it's going to be neat. It could be fun. But anyway, I do believe that's going to be all for me today, everyone. If I can uncross my hand, that'd be great. There we go. Yeah. But because the one thing that like first person shooters are like missing that I feel um, they could really benefit from is having some sort of like progression system, right? Like you just go around and shoot things and sure like guns are kind of progression, right? Um, like you get new guns and like how old Doom used to do it where um, yeah, like an RPG leveling system, basically, is what I'm going to implement. I'm going to have, like, two different, um, like, skill tree kind of things. One for, like, stat points that you get when you level up, and one for, like, skill points. And the skill points are going to let you buy your guns or modify your guns, kind of like that. And, like, how Classic Doom did it, where they had uh, every level, basically, you, like, restart with, like, no guns. Or I forget how, like, often you lose all the guns that you had to begin with. You got to pick them up through the level again. Um, I didn't necessarily like that. I want to have it to be like you keep all your guns all the time. Um, it's kind of like magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know. It's going to depend. Like, if I want to make this game good, it's going to cost money to like hire an artist to actually make good sprites for it. Um, and that's going to be the uh, the the main. When will a game like actually develop past 
me doing like just coding stuff. I'm gonna have to find someone first who can make like decent, like at least Doom level sprites where they're, they're a fairly decent resolution. Not like what I'm currently using now. They'd have to be like better and the monsters would have to be a little more uh, like evil looking and less cute and whatnot. And then also someone to make like backgrounds and stuff like that for the game. Just like so much money would go to that. And then also I'd like to have an original soundtrack for it um, rather than just finding free online stuff. Yeah, I, I've used Fiverr in the past for stuff, but finding the right artist that I want within like a decent budget and whatnot. Because I have made like original music before and like some of the songs, I think one song was like $150 for like one guy and then a couple other people were like, oh yeah, uh, I can make you a song for like $50 or like 30 bucks. And I was like, okay. Um, and I'm really bad at being like, uh, this is the music that I, I want. Like, I don't know how to explain music. So I'm like, uh, here's this reference of this song that I think is okay. Um, can you make something similar to it? And then like, they're like, here, here's this piece. And I'm like, that's like nothing what I want, but I don't really know how to explain what I do want. So I'll take it because it sounds okay anyway. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how what my experience with commissioning music has been. When it comes to artwork, I am amazing at artwork uh, descriptions because I have commissioned a lot of artwork of uh, my characters that I've come up with. And uh, goddamn, I've, I've probably spent thousands of dollars on artwork commissions. So I got really good really fast at being like, okay, so here's all these references of the, uh, the characters and all this stuff. And I want them in like this pose with this background and all that good jazz, right? And those are really easy. Music, it's like, okay, so I want something that kind of sounds like this, that has like this instrument in it maybe. But then again, I don't know what any instrument is really called or sounds like. So I could hear a sound and be like, that sounds like a violin. But when in reality, it's like a bass or a, uh, what's the, the cello, something like that. I don't know. I don't have an ear for music. So it's hard to kind of do that. But anyway. That's the, an upcoming project that who knows when I'll get to that to focus on it and whatnot. But man, I wish I just had like millions of dollars so I could be like, hey, uh, I'll pay you people to make this game that I want made. And then they make it properly without all the uh, amateurish mistakes and nonsense that I have. It would just be so great. So great. But yeah. Anyway, I'll end things here for today. Uh, today's Wednesday, right? Yeah, today's Wednesday. So tomorrow, um, we'll be starting on level 11 onward and uh, going from there. We'll have to, of course, set up a new uh, tile, uh, tile set for it, but that should be easy. That'll take like less than five minutes to do. And we'll just start building levels and uh, go from there. And Shouldn't have any issues because I don't plan to be testing the game at all between now and then. So, yeah, having millions would like. Just, first of all, having millions would be great because you could be like, well, I don't have to do anything anymore. I can literally just live the rest of my life in, you know, relative luxury as long as you don't overspend. But uh, if I had millions, like millions, millions, like near billions, millions. I would do so much stuff. Like I would make a, a car company that makes like, first of all, they'd be electric cars because that's like the direction we want to go in, right? Um, however, rather than looking like all the stupid basic loser cars out there um, now, I'd make them look like exotic sports cars, but they wouldn't be like sports car engine kind of things. They would just look good, right? I think there's a market out there for people who would want just cars that look really good and they don't necessarily care whether or not they're fast or cost millions of dollars. So if you can make like a, an exotic looking car that costs like 20 grand, so many people would buy it. Like if you could get a car that looks like a Lamborghini for like 20 grand, a bunch of people would be lining up for that car, right? 
I don't know why no one's doing it. It makes no sense, right? As long as it has like luxuries and is built properly and whatnot, it doesn't matter if it goes fast, because let's be honest, most people aren't going to be opening up their car to 100 plus speeds. They're going to be going on freeways and stuff like that, which is at most is like 80 or 90. Um, but yeah, I would do that. I'd make a game company. That would be fun to do. Um, and actually like tell people all the ideas that I have that I cannot make because I'm not skilled enough to do so. It would just be so good. So good. Body kits, yeah. I don't know. Body kits are... I don't like body kits. And body kits will, like, require effort, right? There's not a lot of people who are like, okay, I want to buy a car and then add a body kit onto it, right? Some people just want to buy a car and have it be that car, right? And they don't want to do a lot of work to it, right? Because people aren't just skilled. Like, some people are car people, but they're not, like, mechanic car people. So... They're not really able to do anything with their car, right? Like, I like cool looking cars. I do not know how to do anything with a car for the most part, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why car makers have not been like, yeah, let's make just cool looking cars, right? Like, they have the opportunity to do so. It's so easy, but they don't do it. But yeah, anyway, I'm just rambling now at the end of the video, so uh, at the end of the stream. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up here. I need to go for a walk and exercise a bit and all that other stuff. So until next time, everyone, bye-bye.